exactly what Bison wants to be and says no. Oh my goodness. That's it. Yep. That's it. Here right we there. go. It's that's the it. finish that's line. It. Oh, little love yep. tap little by B. Neal. That's going to be it. And your, uh, your winner today is Cole Woo. Richardson, Bryson Neal, making up a lot of time, making our hearts beat fast. And yeah, I mean, uh, we uh, somehow got into the lead there early on. We actually didn't have that great of a jump, but uh, was able to sneak through some guys. I think we third going in the woods, uh, got around boards. Josh dusted me out, and you know, I was talking to Brandon Frazier, and before the race he said, like, you know, X mile to X mile actually wasn't bad on the West Virginia side. So uh, I was just trying to push to catch Josh there uh, to see if he kind of, you know, let me round and pace off me. He knew, uh, you know, we're pretty quick here. We still have the most wins here. I'm just pumped to get another one. And uh, I don't know. We just uh, clicking off laps felt real comfortable. Uh, was letting Bryson kind of click off some time there at the end, but uh, gave him a little too much, got some lappers, and you know, all of a sudden, boom, he's right there. And uh, you know, I knew he was going to be charging, but, uh, you know, we got it done. So, uh, dusty, dusty track. And it was, a, it was a long haul back to the front. You know, whenever I got goggles at the pit stop, got me fresh water. And uh, whenever I got around Josh Merritt and McGill, and I got some clear track, man, I was really starting to lay it down. And uh, the track where we just got that little bit of rain, the berms, they were burming up awesome. Uh, that that's the engine out, Hauser, Hauser A-Arms, Oka Shocks, everything was clicking great today, man. And uh, I'm so pumped I was able to, you know, really man, get close to him at the pit. He was able to show him some wheels coming in here to the finish line. And I wish I had a little bit more time, but uh, I'm so pumped. I'm really happy to bring home second. Start was, I thought I had the jump, uh, got spun a little bit there. And then, uh, dude, I, uh, Bryson, I went wide in the corner. And Bryson just came out of nowhere, literally landed, landed on me. And uh, pretty scary, luckily. Kind of duck out, uh, but I think we ended up bending a uh, ball joint when he landed on us, and uh, that was lap one. So it made it a little, little tough to go straight, you know. And we, we knew we couldn't turn left as aggressive as we wanted to, but uh, no, just uh, adapted to that. And then uh, we were get on back like last second to last, and hey, we came through. You know, we made it happen. Um, you know, back on the box, solid points day. Uh, row one at Snowshoe, which will be nice. And uh, yeah, all in all, good day. Um, you know, just uh, wish wish our start could have been a little better. I think we had the jump, and you know, it happens. Make a little noise for your XC1 Pro podium. <laughs> Champagne showers. Make some noise for your XC1 podium. This is now every week. It's like they just up the ante. We got towels, then we got koozies, then we got rubber ducks. Now we got. Uh, don't make them feel awkward. Cheer for them while they smile. There we go. All right, a great. Mummy Shark stayed at home this weekend. It's a little hot out here, but everyone's in the same boat, right?
actually, my hand is burning right now. I had a pretty gnarly burn last weekend. So uh, I was just like, don't be a little Get through the race, it'll be okay. And it was. Yeah, we, we made it. Honestly, it wasn't bad. Uh, there's only a handful of sections where I was a little nervous. I couldn't see, but all in all, no, the, the track was super fun. It was pretty rough out there, too. It was pretty dusty. Um, yeah, the, I got into the lead pretty early, and then with about a lap and a half to go, I was trying to get by a lapper, and uh, he started falling, and we collided and went off a little bank. And um, my the tree got wedged in between the forks and my front fender, so I lost about 30 seconds trying to get out of that. And um, Corey went by in that time, and I was about 15 seconds down. I managed to make it up in the last lap. We came through the finish right together, but I wasn't enough time to get past. So we'll take a second, still in points lead. It's a good day. Yeah. No, I missed my mud. I should have done my rain dance, but you know, I felt so sorry for everybody these last couple races. I just couldn't bring myself to. That was a really humble move to like save us all from the mud, though. But I know yeah, you got. I gotta be generous. You know, I can't be. Can't make it all about me all the time. No, I just did it out of the goodness of my heart. Backwards hat. It's almost too hot to wear one. Is this new? Is that KTM Powerwear gear? Go. Got the hunchback action with the water. No, Gonna be a hot one today, but now we're good. Ready for it. What flavor of ice cream do you get from two scoops at the finish line? What would be your choice of flavor? Probably Miller Lite. Oh, okay. I was thinking more like loose tracks or chocolate. No, I'm a, I'm a chocolate vanilla kind of guy, like a twist. Hey, I can deal with that. That's a good... Yeah, twist with some. I like sprinkles. Ooh. I need to know what do you, what are you listening to? I can't tell you until what? I win. What? Until I win a race, then I'll tell you. Okay. Well, I'm gonna timestamp this. So come find me after this race. <laughs> are you ready to go, GNCC racing? Ten seconds for row number one, the XC1 Pro. And we're off! XC1 jockey in for position through turn number two. Cracked along with a fistful of throttle in the 3-4-2. Rockstar Energy Husqvarna will grab the All Balls Racing Whole Shot Award. And we wait on the dust to clear. Woo! Giddy up! Buckle up, Buttercup. It's gonna be a good one.
checkered flag flies, and it is the 3-4-2 Rockstar Energy Husqvarna of Craig DeLong out of Morgantown, Pennsylvania, getting the job done. That one's got to feel good. That's right. It did. Georgia was good, but I feel like the mud kind of, I took it as a situation where I, maybe I lucked into it a little bit, where I wanted to tell myself that I could do it again, and got her done. So, badass. Track was for sure dusty, but I didn't expect. Yeah, I didn't expect it to be this bad, man. I, uh, I, uh, I got out front. And Lane stayed right with me for <laughs> old race, damn near. So, uh, but uh, I kind of crashed, and he got back by me, or got by me, and I'm like, man, it's over. I, I couldn't get up to him and get up to him. And, he caught some lappers and I reeled right up to him and man, I'm like, this is my shot. And I just put a lot of pressure on him. He made a mistake and I was just able to kind of cruise right by and just bring it on in. So it's uh, pretty cool, man. I mean, yeah, it was dusty. Like I said, I got really lucky uh, having a good start and kind of just was able to key off Craig. Um, obviously with the dust, he kind of squirted away a little bit, but um, man, I, I honestly, I felt really good. Bike was working really good today. And, Anytime it wasn't dusty, I was kind of able to reel them in a little bit, but um, yeah, I, I'm at a loss for words. Like I said, I have five hours on the bike since Camp Coker, so that's been seven weeks ago, and didn't even think I was going to race until about Wednesday. This is the first week I've rode twice during the week, so uh, yeah, just at a loss, man. Uh, pumped to do it. Uh, first race my little girl came to do to get on the podium. Wish I could have won it, but uh, that was sick. That was sick. Uh, wasn't easy. Didn't make it easy on myself. Terrible start, which I'm usually a good starter. And of course, the one time we really need a start, cricket botched it. So it was buried. Um, unfortunately, Stewart wasn't quite going up the pace with uh, the top guys. And I just couldn't get around him. It was, you couldn't see. You were uh, looking down at the ground, barely riding. And, in sections, and then the sections you could push, he knew, so he's pushing. So he just, I did what I could, and once we pit, I was able to get by them, and then was able to hammer down. Now I was creeping on the leaders, or at least second, but too little, too late. I'll take it on the box from the last few. It's been a struggle, so we're back. Thank you. I can't even remember now. No, it's uh, Foo Fighters, best of you. There you go. Yeah. Thanks, man. Pre it's good, finally. Tired of those second places. Waynesburg crew, you know? Waynesburg crew. 2023, that deserves its own round of applause right there. Craig DeLong getting the job done, man. Being that first two-time winner. 100% chance of champagne showers at the Parts Unlimited Mason Dixon. Make more noise. Once again, put your hands together for the XC2 Pro Podium here from the Parts Unlimited Mason Dixon. GNCC returns to Snowshoe Mountain. We are back. Yamaha Racing Snowshoe GNCC, a round like no other. And this has been a season like no other. Of course, the big story, hey, seven rounds of racing, seven different winners. Will we see a two-time winner? Yes. And who was it? Craig DeLong showing up, showing out. He's won two races this season, first rider to do so in the pro class. And I got to say, he won the mud in Georgia. He won the Dust Bowl uh, that was the Mason Dixon GNCC. Does he carry that momentum into today's race? Well, he's got the points lead. He's got the reverse plate, but you got two hungry guys behind him. Stu Baylor, Ben Kelly, two guys coming off probably, in their opinion, a dismal race, one they want to forget. 
some points, yes, but not where they want to be. So they're going to come out. Everybody's hungry. Everybody wants to go into summer break with that momentum, especially if that momentum means you have the points lead. But right now, hey, it is Craig DeLong on the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna. He is the man with a target on his back. All that and more starts now on RacerTV.com. Racer TV, we are here for the 2023 Yamaha Racing Snowshoe GNCC, and Johnny, we have a good one on our hands. We have Craig DeLong, our set first two-time winner of the season. We've been saying that'll be a pivotal moment for the season, and here we are. We've been waiting to open a show and say that, who our first two-time winner was since, well, essentially round two or three, yeah. and here we are now at round nine. It took to get it done. We had seven winners in seven rounds. Finally, at round eight, Craig DeLong, the first one to double up, and with it comes the points lead, and uh, a great weekend for him. I mean, a points lead for him, and quite frankly, uh, you know, a, a little bit of a rough weekend for his two closest title competitors, and uh, Ben Kelly there in sixth place, and Stu Baylor finishing up ninth. Uh, you know, it was a big points day for Craig, and, you know, he's firmly in command of this championship right now. Yeah, but Stu is still right there in the points with this. He's in second. Ben's going to be in third right behind him. So the points are still kind of close going into this break here. Yeah, you're looking at a 24-point spread between the top three, uh, and with 30 points on the line, I mean, you could see a new points leader at the end of the day tomorrow uh, or today. One of those things that you know you got to watch here at Snowshoe is the track is so technical it can jump up and bite you at any given moment and uh, it really is important just to survive this one let alone try and get on the podium or, or up into that points posi paying position and 30 points for the win. It's uh, You want to max points but you also just need to survive the day and get your machine to the finish. And Johnny those three aside there is still plenty of people that could win here this weekend. Lane Michael getting second place at that last race there and like you said, we had seven winners in seven races, so that's seven people we know of that can win. Yeah, absolutely, seven, and, and obviously Lane Michael throwing his hat in the ring in his first race back uh, there in second, and, and really battled right down to the end for that one. So, And he's a hometown West Virginia boy, rides well here in the Rocks. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see him back up on the box today. A, a great ride for him two weeks ago at Mason Dixon. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. Jordan Ashburn loves the mud, loves technical conditions, thrives in hard enduro type conditions. Ricky Russell has won here before. He's already won this season. Uh, and the last time Ricky Russell won here at Snowshoe, he was on that Ampro Yamaha. This year, back on that Ampro Yamaha. Will it be the magic that it takes to put him back in the center of the box? It could be. We're going to find out. And speaking of the center of the box, we got to catch up with the last race winner, Craig DeLong. We'll get a word in from him. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, I grew up in these conditions, just back home in Pennsylvania, just rocky, nasty, muddy stuff, you know. So uh, I definitely... I enjoy riding this stuff, but racing, you know, is a whole different story. So um, I'm excited. Uh, definitely with the rain they had this week, it's definitely going to make things really interesting for all the mud. And it's going to be nasty. Um, and I think if you know that going in, that's, uh, that's a little bit of an advantage. So um, all these guys are good in this kind of condition. So it's... It's not, I don't think it's going to be any different than any other race. I think we're all going to be battling together, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be a battle to the end. And it was good to hear from our points leader there as well as our last round winner. But moving to the XC2, Liam Draper finally getting that win last week and our points leader getting a third place. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about a guy that's been grinding and working for it and seeming like he had so many ripped out of his hands. Liam Draper, it seemed like he was right there on the cusp so many times so far here in 2023 and just was not able to seal the deal. Finally at the Mason-Dixon, he got the job done. We saw the emotion crossing the finish line. That meant a lot to him. Uh, and, man, that championship in that XC2 class has really come down to a barn burner. Uh, number two at Mason Dixon, Angus Riordan, I think back there in fourth place in points in that XC2 class, but the top three in points. Uh, Rui Barbosa was third. He was on the podium at Mason Dixon. He's actually the points leader in that class, not far behind him. Liam Draper, also Cody Barnes in the mix as well. So those four guys really duking it out, a slugfest atop that XC2 class, and uh, you just never know which one of those guys is going to win or, or even be on the box at all when you look at, at that class. It's, it's just shaking up every week. Yeah, Angus gets 
get in that second place at la the last round. He's got to win this season as well. So, like you're saying, so many people that can do it. But my question is, can AM Pro Yamaha, you're speaking to Ricky Russell, can they do it in the XC2 class as well? The last time Ricky Russell won here in 2017, his then teammate, uh, Josh Toth, won here as well in the XC2 class, also on an AM Pro Yamaha. So, it would be a great weekend for them to do it. But, you know, there's a lot of capable riders out there. And then, if we go to the XC3 class, Toby Cleveland getting it done again at the Mason Dixon. He's built up a pretty uh, pretty stout points lead in that XC3 class over Dakota DeVore and some of his nearest competition. But this is a gnarly track, and we've seen that those are the races that Toby sends, seems to struggle in. Uh, Dakota DeVore, Jay Lipscomb, both guys that really thrive in these conditions. So we'll see who can get it done here today. There's a preview from what we can expect from today's racing. It was good to hear from everybody, but we are going to throw things down to Jared Bolton for the Yamaha track description. Well, thanks, guys. It's awesome to be back here on Snowshoe Mountain. You know, every week, you, you know what I'm probably, you think you know what I'm going to say, but I'm not going to say it this week. This isn't a little something for everyone. This is more of a technical, rocky, muddy, nasty riders course. If you like rocks, roots, mud, this is all for you. Now, we do throw in some of those real fast ski slopes, but that's only a small portion of the course. The first little bit, you got a little bit of fast ski trail, then you drop down into the infamous Howard's Hole. It's deep muddy, rocky, nasty. It's one of the hardest things you'll ride all year. And then you get a little bit of a break. We'll send you up some ski slopes for a little while. And then when you send you over here on this side of the mountain, guess what? It is nonstop rocks, roots, and muds for miles and miles and miles. That's where these guys that are real good in the technical stuff are going to excel. And then you get a little bit of a break coming back to the finish. It gets fast again for just a little bit and then back out towards Howard's Hole again. But by and far, the majority of this course what am I gonna say? What am I gonna say? Yeah, rocks, roots, mud, the good stuff. If you like that kind of stuff. Speaking of that nasty stuff, let's go down to Howard's Hole. Check in with our boy Zach. Thanks, Jared. I'm down here at the Howard's Hole. Uh, now, this is the calm before the storm. As you can see, all is quiet right now. But the arrows have been laid out. The course has been set up. And the only thing left to do is go racing. Yamaha YZ450F. Narrower, more compact, and lighter. Built to do one thing, go faster. Flexible financing options offered directly through Yamaha are available. See your local Yamaha dealer today. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gaskets seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets sealing championships since 1989. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. 
We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. Last season was my best season ever by far. I won a lot of races, I won the championship, and it was my, also my first year using Arma. And one of the things I noticed was just my ability to string good days together. You know, like especially in the summertime in Florida where you're riding every day and the heat index is 108 degrees and you're doing 230s and going to the gym and bicycle and, and all that stuff. I think in the past I've been super inconsistent day to day. Yeah, I may have a, you know, a good race here or you know, a good day during the week there, but Overall, I think where I improved the most was my consistency in my recovery. GNCC Racing is brought to you by Specialized. Specialized Turbo E-Bikes. It's you, only faster. And Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. And welcome to everybody watching live on RacerTV.com. This is round number nine of the 2023 Grand National Cross Country Racing Series presented by Specialized, your AMA National Championship. Yeah, we, we got the crowd behind us. This is a good shot, is it not? Uh, on a little bit of a delay, if you're if you're tuning in, we got to make sure that racetrack is safe for uh, the pro race that's about to take off here. So, hey, we're going to kill some time in, in epic fashion here. Joined uh, by my good buddy, Megawatt, Matt Watson, one of the voices of pro motocross and a man very familiar. You are entrenched in the history of, well, really motorsports in general, but GNCC especially. Going back to that Blackwater 100, that's what it's about today. Paying tribute to that uh, megawatt. I'm just going to hand you the microphone and you give us your interpretation of that history lesson. Well, I got to tell you, Mikey, uh, when you mentioned the word Blackwater, so many people vision envision so many things. And this is an idea that started in 1974 by Big Dave Coombs, and it came to fruition in 1975, was the first version of the Blackwater 100. And you have to understand, fans, this was a true 100-mile race. This wasn't a time race. Listen, if it took six hours to do those 100 miles, these were 25-mile loops traditionally, and you did four loops. Not on time, not anything else, not adjusted any way, then first man through is going to be your winner. And in 1975, Kevin Lavoie from Rhode Island was the first winner. Kevin came back in 76 to back that up, you know, this thing's starting to gain traction. So he comes back in 76. The game starts to change just a bit. We talk about legendary obstacles. We talk about the moon rocks. We talk about things like the peat bogs, the legendary hill climbs. And, of course, you can't mention Blackwater without the infamous 93 River Crossing, which was always drama-filled and sometimes a game-changer in race.
race decider. So throughout the early 70s, the 100 miler, the 100 miler series really took off. So we added the Brown Jug, the Fireball, the Big Bear, and all of these are very near my home. All of these are very near where I grew up. So even though I was a moto kid and Big Dave looked after me in that manner, I was always included in all the off-road stuff. So uh, about 1982, I got to, well, about 1980, I got to make my first trip to Blackwater uh, with some older guys and uh, some parents. About 82, I'm making the trip on my own. And by this time, by 82, we'd already had winners like Kevin Hines, Frank Gallo, as I'd mentioned earlier. You know names like Terry Cunningham. You might have heard a name, uh, Eddie Lojack. Eddie Lojack has three wins there as well. But outside of these names that you're really going to recognize, so many big events, so many big happenings took place at Blackwater. It's incredible. Uh, one of the things that I always remember uh, as a child, uh, as a child, as a teenager, uh, is Mark Hyde on that epic fourth win at Blackwater, the wingest rider. That's why we call him Mr. Blackwater. Four wins at the legendary race. Look, you're an elite company if you get one win at Blackwater. Right. Okay? Only so many guys on that plaque, Mikey, I can assure you, and they're all badasses. <laughs> no two ways about it. So one of those memories is Mark coming down Main Street, Davis, West Virginia, on the rear wheel of that Husky with four fingers in the air for four wins. So Mikey, from Tommy Norton, from Tommy Norton winning on a 125 KTM, Timmy Coombs winning on a CR500 in 1988, till we finished up the Blackwater in 1993, and you might remember this guy's name as well, okay? We talk about all these guys, we talk about all these moto mercenaries and badasses. Fred Andrews was the final guy to win the Blackwater 100. And this race today is the closest thing that we're going to see, similar terrain, and I thank everybody for coming out and enjoying this great weekend with us and enjoy our throwback tribute to the Blackwater 100. Let's go. If that doesn't give you cold chills right there, Megawatt, I don't know what does. The history lesson, somewhere out there, Fred Andrews, Mark Hyde, just grinning ear to ear right now. There you go. Make some noise for my guy, Megawatt, Matt Watson. All right, we are just about ready now. Are we, are we ready for prayer? Okay, well, without further ado, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we ask for your undivided attention as we turn the microphone over to Mr. Ricky Towery to lead us in a word of prayer. Thank you, Mikey. Hey, let's go, Lord. Let's have a word of prayer together this afternoon. Heavenly Father, once again, we do thank you for bringing us here safely to such a beautiful place. You look across these mountains, it looks so wonderful. Lord, be up with these riders this afternoon. Keep them safe. Let them go out there and have a good time together. We thank you for the Snowshoe family for letting us use this property to have some fun on. Continue to watch over our military men and women. Do be with all our local policemen, firemen, and paramedics, and all our communities across the United States each and every day serving to protect us. Lord, we come down to the final race before the summer break. We've already had so much fun this year and this weekend. We just ask that you give us a few more hours this afternoon to have a little bit more fun. Lord, I have one special prayer request. If you will be with the racial production workers and staff members. They don't get no summer off. They just keep on going. Be with them and let them have a safe summer. And once this all over with the day and we head down the road home, take us all home safely so one day we can get back together to have some more fun. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ricky Towery. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, yeah. We, yeah, we get a spot. So if me and Megawatt get to be out in, in the center, so does Miss Kyla Meadows. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I will turn the mic over one more time. The singing of our national anthem by Kyla Meadows. So, please remove your hats and cross your hearts as we honor the greatest nation in the world with the singing of our national anthem. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof 
that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land. Goodness gracious, mercy sakes alive, if that don't get you fired up to go GNCC racing. I don't know what will. All right, reaching that point. Hey, we got to meet our pro row. For, uh, well, I tell you what, uh, how about this top 10? That's who we're going to meet. Snowshoe, hey, a little bit different. Come on, Mikey. Keep your head on a swivel. So we're going to meet the top 10 riders coming in to the Snowshoe GNCC. Jeremy Holbert, are you ready down there? I got a thumbs up when we are ready. Guy's going to be rolling to the line in accordance to points. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, your top 10 rolling to the line first. The 342 out of Morgantown, Pennsylvania, on the Rockstar Energy Factory Husqvarna, Craig DeLong! Rolling to the line next, the 514 out of Hodges, South Carolina, aboard the Rocky Mountain ATV MC Tealy Energy KTM, Stu Baylor! Rolling to the line next, the 530 out of Connecticut on an FMF factory racing KTM, Ben Kelly. Rolling to the line next, your defending national champion, the number one out of Livingston, Tennessee, aboard the Magna One Motorsports Husqvarna, Jordan Ashburn. Rolling to the line next, the 314 out of South Carolina. On the Babbitts Online Monster Energy Team Green Kawasaki, the Grizzly Grant Baylor. And now row number two, rolling to the line next, the 212 out of Duval, Washington, aboard the Ampro Yamaha. He's rough, he's rowdy, Ricky Russell. Rolling to the line next, the number 17 out of Australia. On the Babbitts Online Monster Energy Team Green Kawasaki, Josh Strang. And rolling to the line next, the 969 out of Boonville, North Carolina. Aboard the FMF Factory Racing KTM, Johnny Girard. Rolling to the line next and representing the XC2 and Chile on the Phoenix Racing Honda, Rui Barbosa. And last but certainly not least, the 990, also representing the XC2 class at a Sterling, Illinois, on the Phoenix Racing Honda, Cody Barr. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your starting or your top 10 in the points as they stand as we come into Snowshoe. And at this time now, Ricky Towery will step forward. Well, once row one and row two get back and lined up, they said, hang on, Mikey, we want to race two. Let us get back up to the line. Locked and loaded. As we pay tribute to the Blackwater 100, you heard Megawatt Matt Watson talking about the history, the rich history 
of the Blackwater 100 and how we continue to pay tribute to that here at the GNCC. This is, listen, GNCC already one of a kind. And you got Snowshoe GNCC. That is a one of one event. It is just special to be here. We're grateful you're here with us. We're grateful you're watching at home on racertv.com. We know it's going to be a good one. We've seen incredible racing all weekend. You got the time adjustments with the start on Snowshoe Drive. So you got guys in row two, three, four, five, six. That, hey, I got a shot in this one. I got a little advantage. Let me take advantage of this track, advantage of this situation. Let's shake some things up. Let's play spoiler. So as we get adjusted down there on row number one, how about it? Craig DeLong in what's been a historic season as Ricky Towery now will step forward and go through the motions but a historic season in GNCC, seven rounds of racing, seven different winners. The big question, who's going to be the first guy to get two? Craig DeLong said it's going to be me. He comes out, he won a mutter in Georgia. He won a dust bowl at the Mason-Dixon. Can he keep that going here? Ricky Towery looks over now, and he'll look down at the watch. And we are just about ready to set it off now as Ricky steps forward and lets our riders know, one minute, one minute. And we are just about ready to go GNCC racing for row number one. All right, blue flag waves. Row number one, locked and loaded. Ashburn, Baylor, DeLong, Baylor, and Kelly ready to go on Snowshoe Mountain in 10 seconds for row number one, the XC1 Pro. Bang, and we're off. The 514 up the cut. That's going to be Stu Baylor with the early lead. Being challenged by Jordan Ashburn. Row number two, Ricky Russell on the inside. Johnny Gerard beside him. And it's Rui Barbosa in the number three spot. Here we go with row number three now. Ryder Lafferty, Gus Reardon, Mason Simmons, Liam Draper, and Mike Wachowski. Wachowski got some making up to do there. Here we go. Row number four, Evan Smith, Lane Michael, and Jonathan Johnson. How about it, Evan Smith? Ooh, good drive right there. There's Josh Toth. Welcome back to GNCC, good buddy. And Trevor Bollinger. Row number seven, Bub Sasha, Jack Edmondson, Brody Johnson, Jesse Ansley, Philip Jane, and Grant Davis. Here we go, row number eight now, FMFX C3, Toby Cleveland, Dakota DeVore, Sawyer Caratorio, Jason Liscom, and Jack Walker. Row number nine now, Jay Snop, Travis, Eugene Damon, and Zach Hayes. That's a seven, two, two, Zach Hayes out in front. Thorne Devlin, Van Goslin, and Joe Schreiber. That's gonna be the 369, a Thorne Devlin with an early lead. Row number 12 now, open A, we got Dylan De La Cruz. Davidson, Hunter Bush, and Chase Colville, as well as Hunter Smith. Row number 13 now, Ezra Prine, Russell Smith, Dale Fritton, Pryor Marsh, Kitten Coleman, and Cole Whitmer. Open A classes, Samuel Evans, Jeremy Wallstrom, Matthias Opaza, Randy Smith, Zach Peters, Zachary Hugel, and James Clark. Row number 15 now, Tyler Palmer, Bolton B. Rob, Will Stephen Piper, Brayden Millette, and Lane Whitmer. 250A classes. Row number 16, Trevor Maley. That's going to be the 441 of Michael DeLosa out in front with that early lead. Good drive right there by the 248. That's Gavin Simon out ahead of Jason Tino. Sean Myers Jr., the 391 in the open A class. Four stroke A lights, Ryan Piper, Kayla Baltimore, Colton Shield. T-Rex, Nick DeFeo, and Ty Ely. Here we go, row number 20, four stroke A lights, Hollenbeck, Eli Childers, Van Adams, Isaac, Isaiah Brown, Matthew Davis. And here we go, four stroke A likes, row 21, Huck Jenkins, Lance the Machine, Machino, Caleb Hines, Mac Reimer, Owen Barnes, and Sam Hall. Row 22, Tyler Shields, Peyton Harden, David Johnson, and T.P. Thor Powell. It was Peyton Harden with the early lead right there. There goes the 3-5-4 of Randall Irvin. You got it, buddy. Go get him. Row number 25, Junior A, 25 plus. Adam Machinsky, Gregory Funk, Matt Modick, Andrew Boggs, and Brayden Moore. Here we go with row number 26, Sam Shaver, Benjamin Fricks, Rex Hugel, Wesley Schmidt, Thomas Caldwell, Aaron Higgins, and Jesse Kidlow. 
Row number 27, Caleb Williams. They make some noise for the man as he goes by. Get it, 540. Row 28, Mike Carrasco Jr., Robbie Norwood, and Daniel Sims. The 416 up Sims out in front. Row number 29, Micaeus Gomes, Justin Bullers, Craig Asher, Aaron Co Coxon, and Michael Funk. You know what we say, who's got the funk? Michael's got the funk. Row number 30, Rob Lipinski, Nick Mellinger. Mellinger out in front. Here comes Joe Marsh, Frank Messina, Joshua Wyatt, Stephen Meacham, and Joel Stoltz. Row number 32 now, Vinny Tomich, Brian Glenn, David Glenn, Alan Peters, and Darren Darmos. The 931 of Darren Darmos with the early lead in row number 33. Cody Hosta, Joel Grover, Stephen Edmondson, and Buddy Barnes. And it looked like Joel Grover with the early lead in that one. Row 35, Isaac Brunty, Colton Coons, Anthony Opplinger. Here we go with row number 36 now. Dylan Fleming, Chandler Taylor, Connor Lawrence, Braxton Gross, Jamie Wilkerson. Row number 37, take it off now. Matthew Harris, Aaron Shelley, Isaac Cruz, Cole Goodman. That's gonna be the 392 of Cole Goodwin with that early lead. Row 38 now, Robert Wise, Rivers Morris, Bain Croft, Devin Moore. That's row 38. Lucas Rubenstein out there. Here comes 250B, Ty Atkinson, Aaron McAfee, Jimmy Moore, Brayden Sylvester. Row number 40 now, Andrew Adams, Austin Wallace, Parker Crisplip, Jason Morris, and Gavin Guthrie. Early lead to the 685 of Jason Morris. Row number 42 now, four-stroke B-lights. Hey, get you some 119. It's a 598 on the helmet. He looked kind of dirty. I don't know where he came from. It should be 250B, row 40. That's the 458 out in front. That's Brock Bell Soul with that early lead. Row 43 now. Hunter Barron, Drew Hoffman, Dalton Robbins, Dylan Miller. Here we go with row 44. It's going to be Andrew Seegers and Rocco Zakaria. 536 of Seegers out in front. Row number 45, Brady Beerbaum, Briar Menace, Gavin Hampton, and Caden Childers. Oh. Got some catching up to do, Caden. Row 46, 150B, Trevor Golden, Malcolm Smith, and Corey Armstrong. Row 48 now, Junior B, 25 plus, Devin Hall, Logan Robinette, Ty Roberts, Douglas Randolph, and Luke Hendrickson. Row 49, off and rolling, Junior B, 25 plus, Gantz, Petrie, Williams, Dylan Davis, and Torin Borkland. Row number 50 now, Travis Barton, Lance Hoyer, and Billy Saliga. And that's a 925 right there with the early lead. That is Billy Saliga. Row 51, Junior B, 25 plus, John Bottomy and Richard Martz. I think that was John Bottomy out in front. Row 52, Adam O'Dell, Scott Hopper, and Dave Rudder. Row 53 coming up next, Zachary Taylor, Seth Skyrick, Tommy Kirkhoff, Dennis Blalican, John King, Laura Jovesa, and Richie Cardillo. Row 54 now, Sasha Durek, Lewis Petta, Cody Johnson, Michael Movich, Sean Kilkenny, and Charlie Torzani. And here we go, row number 55 now, it's George Klein, Jason Cottrell, and Aaron McAfee, the 801 of McAfee with the early lead. Here comes our last row, Senior B, 40-plus, Aldo Nunez, Zachary Roofing, and Jared Hall, and there goes Track Sweep. Woo! It is Snowshoe GNCC, baby. We got ourselves a safe and clear starting line. Please be cognizant of your surroundings. Pay attention to road crossings and listen to the staff. You are free to move about the country. We're going to take a short commercial break, get in a word with our sponsors, and when we come back, more from the Yamaha Racing Snowshoe GNCC. We had a, uh, a, a kid's uh, Evo, e-bicycle that was just, Levo, excuse me, uh, that was just stolen. So if you see it out and about, maybe ask them if you want to be a good Samaritan and turn it back.
Yamaha YZ450F. Narrower, more compact, and lighter. Built to do one thing, go faster. Flexible financing options offered directly through Yamaha are available. See your local Yamaha dealer today. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gaskets seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets sealing championships since 1989. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. Last season was my best season ever by far. I won a lot of races, I won a championship, and it was my, also my first year using Arma. And one of the things I noticed was just my ability to string good days together. You know, like especially in the summertime in Florida where you're riding every day and the heat index is 108 degrees and you're doing 230s and going to the gym and bicycle and, and all that stuff. I think in the past I've been super inconsistent day to day. Yeah, I may have a, you know, a good race here or you know, a good day during the week there, but Overall, I think where I improved the most was my consistency in my recovery. GNCC Racing is brought to you by Specialized, Specialized Turbo E-Bikes. It's you, only faster. And Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Racer TV for the 2023 Yamaha Racing Snowshoe GNCC here in gorgeous West Virginia. This is round number nine of the Grand National Cross Country Series presented by Specialized and AMA National Championship. My name is Jackson Burl, and I'm alongside Zach Heron to bring you today's action. Of course, you've already heard from Mikey, May Mikey Waynes with the 10 second calls, and you'll also be hearing from him later in the show. But for now, stay tuned as Zach will be recapping the start. Yeah, thanks, Jackson. It has been an action packed day all day long out here at Snowshoe as we take a look at this specialized start recap. Little different starting procedures out here at Snowshoe, but that front row was off with a bang. And guess who? Mr. Stu Baylor coming around the first turn first, but watch the Magna One Husky, Jordan Ash. Ashburn, your defending champion, side by side, running it all the way to the other side of the hill. And look at that right there. Ashburn had the inside, pinches it off, and actually ends up causing uh, Stu to bump back several positions. But Ashburn going to lead them, uh, our cameras, the last time they saw him there. And then row number two, just behind us, the Ampro Yamaha of Ricky Russell. And then I believe this is row number three as well there couldn't quite tell. We need the Johnny G eyes there. And you see a couple of the two-wheel riders actually going off the side of the road trying to get hooked up 
in some of the dirt as well. But this rolling start procedure, uh, pretty interesting. Jackson, it's our first time here. That front row coming from a dead stop, and then the rest of those rows slowly rolling to the same line. And, and to go along with that, we'll have adjusted time as well. Now here is the infamous Howard's Hole, and look at who we've got. Jordan Ashburn leading the way on the Magnum One Husqvarna with Stu Baylor on the RM ATV MC. Teeley Energy KTM just behind in second. And look at the gap these guys have already opened up here. Uh, that's Craig DeLong going through in third. Ricky Russell sitting in fourth. Uh, I believe Lee that's Ben Kelly. Kelly. Yep, followed by Josh Strang there. Uh, and then Rui. that is one of your XC2 boys there. Yep, that is Rui Barbosa on the Phoenix Racing Honda. Uh, that's Johnny Girard there behind him. Then Grant Baylor. So the Grizzly kind of falling back there off those first couple rows. And I believe that was Cody Barnes just behind them. Now this is a cool first-hand point of view of what you guys or what the racers are seeing out on track at the moment. Uh, this is an onboard camera courtesy of our producer, Adam Gordon. And this just goes to show when we say it's rocky, guys, I'm not talking about rocks you're going to find out in your backyard. It is humongous rocks all over the place. The bike is constantly chattering around. And uh, this was taken before the racing had started. This is a nice nice, calm track compared to what is going on right now. We've had a full day of racing yesterday with the ATVs, and then the bikes have been doing a whole lot more this morning as well. So uh, to say it's going to be a rough course out there is a bit of an understatement, but a very unique onboard here. You can see also another theme to go along with the weekend is water here at Snowshoe. It's been raining. Actually quite pretty right now. I'm trying not to jinx it. The sun is out, but uh, regardless, the damage has been done, and it's going to be wet coming through these woods. As you can see, a lot of standing water going to be splashing up in to the goggles and could play a role in this race as well. Now, taking a look at this Yamaha Racing track map here at the Yamaha Racing Snowshoe GNCC. Weaving all over this course, uh, Jackson, we've been told it's a little different than some of the other races, but really been a fun course from what we've heard, a fast course as well, and made for some great racing. Yeah, Zach, they'll hit Howard's Hole right there, the Monster Mile, make it over there to the X, then they'll go to the top of the world there at mile marker number four, head to Red Mud Road. Then they'll head to the West Plateau, back to Shea Way, to the FMF Power Point, and then they'll get to the Pro Pits, and then through the West Ridge Road, back to the finish there. Yeah, so a lot of different, uh, I guess, key points, not necessarily checkpoints, but just spots in particular that all of these riders have seemed to focus on. Many of them, I would say probably all of them, have actually, if not biked, then walked the track. Now, this graphic coming up next, really unique. Uh, they put this together here at Racer TV, and this kind of shows you the ebb and flows of some of our top riders throughout this season. Uh, pay attention to that top line. Line. That's going to be your points leader throughout the season. We've seen it flip-flop a couple times. It was Stu Baylor. Then it was Ben Kelly. Then it was Stu Baylor again. And now here, just in the last little bit, I'm telling you what, something about that Rockstar Energy Husqvarna, Craig DeLong, Mr. Consistent, is starting to pay off as he now finds himself at the top of the points. It's been a close one, Jackson. First two-time winner of the season there for Craig DeLong. And back on screen, I see Ricky Russell. There comes Jordan Ashburn, and there is Stu Baylor. So, wow. Did Ricky Russell already make it to the lead? Somebody tell me what's going on here. Ricky Russell has clicked the afterburners, and it looks like he has gotten around both of your top two riders there. And uh, I believe this was the leader on screen. We haven't heard anything else. That should be your front pack coming through. So Ricky Russell on the Ampro Yamaha getting things done. Uh, Ampro been having a fantastic weekend here at the Yamaha Racing GNCC here at Snowshoe. I believe that was Liam Draper there. Uh, and Ricky Russell featured on the Moto Tees t-shirt, Jackson. We've been talking about this I've theory. I've been saying it. It just it gets him a little extra excited. Uh, and so, yeah, Ricky Russell slingshot into the front of the field early. And uh, as we watch the rest of the field there, it still looked like it was Rui Barbosa leading that XC2 class. That was another one of the Phoenix Hondas going by on screen there. There goes another Phoenix Honda going by. KTM. Yeah, I believe and there's some of the XC3. Classes coming through as well, so still pretty bunched up as well, which is good to see. And Zach, I would like to welcome Dunlop's Brock Glover here to the studio. Brock, it's good to see you. Well, it's great to be here at Snowshoe again. This is my favorite of the GNCC races, and boy, Mother Nature has thrown a, a wrench in the mix here. We've got incredible mud on the basically the south side of the track. The the north side's pretty heavy, and boy, it's made tire choices incredible. I've never seen such a wide variety of choices for tires of these top riders. We have guys running enduro cross tires. We have riders running the EN91, which is an FIM, more what we see on the ISDE, uh, a DOT 
approved tire. Oh, wow. We have guys running the t traditional AT81 rear, typical knobby motocross tires like MX33. So I've never seen such a variety. And who but the Grant, the Grant Baylor throws in a trials tire? Okay, oh, wow. so I was going to ask you know, about that. You look at these variety of choices, and some of the guys are planning to do a, a pit swap. You know, they that's know what that I was going to ask yeah. you. Is that the plan for the day? Yeah, they're just going to pay, pay attention to it and see how it's wearing. And if it is wearing a little bit more than they should with an enduro cross tile style tire, they're going to pop a wheel change in there, and they figure they can do it somewhere between 35 and 45 seconds. My next question is: Will they keep the same tire when they swap? Uh, most of the guys are planning on it, okay. and so they all they have some backup ones. The ones that are going with the really soft tires, you know, the, the what we call the gummy or the enduro cross style tires, they are they have an alternative choice, but they will probably just replace it with what they have if it's working well. All right. And uh, as far as, we, like, in extreme conditions like this, is that pretty much personal preference? Like, do these riders kind of have their own style suited to their riding style as well, and that's how they make these decisions? Or are you giving advice? How does that kind of play out? Trust me. I hold my hands up, and you guys, you guys, it's all your choice here because here's your menu. You order what you want because I don't want to, you know, I, I would never want to influence their opinion of, of what they think is an advantage. And each rider knows what tire they have, obviously. A guy like Grant Baylor, he knows he's running a complete trials tire. It's called the GP803 and he's running this tire on his bike and he's he's like, okay, I think with that the case, I need to manage it. I can't blitz it on the hard pack sections. I can't blitz it on any asphalt sections, but in the slippery stuff, you know, we get down to Howard's Hole, he knows he's got an advantage. And Just now, looking at your leaders on screen, sorry to cut you off there, Jackson, but yep. it is Ricky Russell. That's our confirmation right there. Ricky's leading the way. That Jordan was Jordan Ashford. in second and then Stu in third. So your top three really still wheel to wheel to wheel. Yeah, Ricky really making some fast moves there in that one section went straight from third to first that was Craig and then Ben Kelly behind him and just to let you know, Ricky has a more traditional AT81, just a standard our, our GNCC tire, the one that Caleb Russell made very, very successful in all his championships. So that tire is the one that Ricky's running on his bike. So it all isn't right. some outlier tire that's uh, leading at this point. All I, right. I was about to say, I very rarely I feel like they would just, like somebody like Grant, I'm sure he's probably ridden with a trials tire multiple times, uh, not just going to go out on a whim and take such an extreme different option. Uh, but, and we see a variety of different obstacles and, and I guess styles that they're going to have to use out here. We've seen some wide open sections like we've got on shot right now. Clearly still very slick as uh, another one of the Rockstar Huskies come through there. Uh, but then we've seen the rocks absolutely have blown my mind. You throw the water on top of it. Um, and yeah, to say it's it's brutal out there is an understatement. Another one of the Phoenix Hondas. Yeah, Brock's in here pointing at the standing water. We've got kind of yeah, still that slop muddy uh, still on the top, but then that extremely hard base on bottom. So uh, if they get too hard on the gas, we've seen even in some of the youth races, the back end kicking out um, or the front ends even tucking if they get too hard on the brakes. And the sun's coming out right now, as you can see, it looks really pretty here, but the, it's just had so much rain here in the snowshoe area in the last three or four days that there's no way it could absorb it all. Yeah, exactly. There's no way to absorb it all. Just as soon as it starts to try to dry out some, it seems like it just hits us again. But the good thing about it is it is dry here today, which will make it to where the rocks, I'm sure, are going to be extra slippery without the rain falling because that's how me and Zach have been saying all weekend. If the rain is falling, at least the rocks are cleared off and have a little bit of traction. Well, and what's been interesting, too, is, is the way this has played into some of the riders' hands here. Uh, Ricky Russell, he does a lot of extreme work. The rider in second as well, Jordan Ashburn, clearly has shown he knows how to get it done in the mud as well. And we were actually able to catch up with Jordan earlier and get a word with him. Be a technical day, that's for sure. Uh, kind of like we left it last year, it's kind of what it's going to be like starting the, starting the day today. And it's going to be a bit of survival and, uh, you know, picking good lines and, and trying to keep it, keep, it, keep it out of the holes. Yeah, it's definitely like the kind of terrain I like to ride. And uh, I enjoy the track and enjoy anything technical like this. So, I mean, I always look forward to this race. And, you know, hopefully we can put it in the center of the box again this year and uh, just ride a smart race and, uh, and end up... Yeah, you know, it was uh, it was tight. Ricky was second row last year, and he is this year again. And uh, you know, it's you got that that buffer gap, and he caught me early in the race last year, and we battled all day, and uh, it was it was gnarly. And uh, you know, there toward the end, we just pushed really hard, and was able to able to close it out. And uh, yeah, it was super exciting to get my first win up here on the mountain. And uh, you know, we've got a couple more since then, and it's just it's been really 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 a blessing and, and awesome.
And I'm telling you what, a confident and happy Jordan Ashburn is a dangerous Jordan Ashburn. Um, and so it's already seen him in second. He's got the good start. Uh, I think we're going to be on the lookout for the number one all day today for sure. So Ricky Russell, though, I I still I can't believe in that one. Jackson and I looked at each other here in the truck like, there's no way he's already yeah. made those moves. It seemed like just in a flash he jumped up uh, past Stu Baylor and Jordan Ashburn, which is no easy task to do. Uh, so I'm really excited to see those two duke it out. And then, of course, Stu Baylor hanging on there. He's going to get in that mix as well. Yeah, definitely. And just as you were talking about, or just as Jordan Ashburn was talking about Ricky starting on row two, we heard some of the other riders saying that they would prefer to start. Grant Baylor said he would prefer to start on row two. So that's interesting that some of them would prefer on the second row instead of that first. Yeah, now as we take a look at the FMF PowerPoint, uh, and that caught us on kind of by surprise there, Jackson, because that time buffer, uh, it's, it's hard to think about that when you're watching the race on track, when you're watching it on camera. Uh, there's a little bit of a time difference between here, so uh, we're waiting on the leaders. T talk about the GNCC fans. You throw the fog at them, you throw the rain, they're still hanging out out here, having a great time. Well, we talk about coming from behind. It's almost always easier to be in second place and watching what's ahead of you. you got that carrot in front of you, so that's by starting in second row and having an extra 10 seconds in your pocket if you could just close close enough get with them in sight maybe with four or five seconds and you go oh yeah i forgot i got this uh trump card i get to lay down exactly. here it's called 10 seconds from the second row so it's uh interesting here but the fans they they stick it out thick and thin i mean they all come here with the mud boots they go down to howard's hole they it's a it's a sight to be seen that's why i just love coming to this event yeah it's the the one we've been hearing about all year long oh you guys haven't been to snowshoe yet everybody's rubbing the hands they got the smile on their face and it definitely has not let us down for sure. It's been a ton of fun yesterday. Uh, and not only just fun as far as a fan standpoint, but the racing has been phenomenal as well. Really close uh, all day yesterday and today as well. Yep, you think right now we're coming into 25 plus minutes into this already and they haven't made it to the 10 mile mark. So we're, they're, they're moving along well, but it's still, it's uh, slow, slow trekking in the muddy sections of that single track. Now, as we take a look at your top 10 overall, Craig DeLong leading the way with 168 points. Stu Baylor sitting there in the second place spot. And we've seen him grab that points lead twice. And it seems like when he gets the reverse plate, he just doesn't have a good race to follow. So Stu right now uh, sitting in that uh, second place spot, only eight points behind. Ben Kelly holds on to third, uh, and then Jordan Ashburn, your defending champ, really coming to life here at the later stages of this uh, this series. Well, I was talking to some of his crew earlier, and they were just saying, Stu just seems to have that look in his eye today that he really wants a win here. So we'll see what happens. And you mentioned Jordan Ashburn is just coming off a very confident win last year. Just, uh, you know, you get that good fuzzy feeling as a rider that you feel confident. You always have a positive outlook. And when you come to a racetrack like this or a course like this, and so he's, you know, he's feeling it too so we'll see what happens in the battle of the titans yeah and jordan and Stu, it just seems like at least here is the last couple rounds they just seem to be magnets for each other and oftentimes at the front of the field uh, but those two have been pushing the limits i know Stu at one point said hey, i feel like jordan had a little more into me and then jordan had some mishaps and then jordan came back and won the following round so it's good to see both of them uh, kind of feeding off of each other at the front of the field yeah guys and another thing to mention we got josh toth out on the track today he's out on a two-stroke the only one in the xc1 that i know of on a two-stroke so it's good to see him back out here as well as our rock star energy of Trevor Bollinger. He is back out there as well. And talking about Josh, Totha, he, he is running an Enduro Cross tire what's the, in the EN91 version. It was that FIM Enduro tire I was telling you about. And he's running in the opposite direction it was designed to run. Like, why would he do that? Yeah. Well, he actually prefers it a little bit in that direction. But also, if you think about the way the knobs are curved on that particular tire, it's a soft compound already. If he runs it in reverse, it's re the curvature is the other way. So it's actually going to wear a little less. So he thinks by turning it around backwards, he can get a little more durability out of a gummy tire and maybe make all three hours of this race. So it's going to be interesting. I think the guys that are running the gummy tire are probably pacing themselves a little bit in the early going. We'll see if it happens, if any of them start moving their way towards the front. Yeah, it definitely seems like strategy is going to be a big point here in this race. And uh, that's been one of my favorite things to watch throughout the season when, you know, they say it's, it's the rider. It comes down to the rider. But here at GNCC, there's a lot more to it. Uh, your entire team's got to be on their game. The pit stops have got to run smooth. you got to get everything done.
gun that you need. Um, and especially now, we've seen the possibility of air, air filter swaps. Now, even including tire swaps, it's going to be exciting to watch for sure as we take a look at this Yamaha live drone waiting on your leaders to pop out of the woods here. Um, and at last we heard, it was that Ampro Yamaha Ricky Russell getting the job done. And uh, like I said a little bit earlier, Jackson, we've seen the Ampro folks have really been putting on a show here at the Yamaha Racing Snowshoe GNCC. Rachel Archer grabbing that WXC win earlier. Zach, your whole podium earlier was Yamaha all the way across three different classes. Yamaha winning all three. So they came here and got done exactly what they were wanting to this weekend. Yeah, the blue crew showing up for real and uh, trying to get a whole lot done. We had two strokes and four strokes up there on that podium too. So uh, a big shout out to all of those riders there in that AM race. But yeah, Rachel uh, getting the job done in the WXC class. I believe over four minutes was the lead she had worked out by the time it was all said and done. So uh, Ampro's got something figured out and I'm sure that doesn't hurt either if you're Liam Draper or if you're Ricky Russell. She comes in after that morning race, probably the last person to see the full scope of the track before those other riders go out. I'm sure she's saying, hey, may want to avoid this area, may want to try to take this line. Uh, so yeah, Ampro's got something figured out right now as it looks like that may be your leader popping out. I do believe, I believe so. so. Yeah, little alternative lines there. And talk about the whole GNCC series and having so many winners and so many different rounds. We have such parity this year, but clearly left lane is a little bit quicker. And a pass. There. Yep. And he made the pass stick. Yep. I'm trying to see who exactly that is. I don't believe. I believe that is Jordan Ashburn back into the lead and Ricky Russell for sure in second now. Yeah, wow, look at that, Ashburn. Look at the amount of speed he was able to carry up that left side there. Uh, the Yamaha Live Drone giving us some great ability to see oversight and see the different lines these riders are able to take. There's Johnny Gerard running up through the hill. Yeah, if Ricky has another chance at that, I don't think he wants to take that right lane there. It was clearly uh, Jordan had the better lane and had a lot more speed there. So uh, unfortunately, a, a, just an error in line selection, but that happens so many times in GNCC. So. And these guys uh, kind of still figuring it out. I feel like as the race wears on, they figure out what line they like, you know, an inside here and outside there. But the ability to adapt throughout the course of this three-hour race is going to be crucial as well. Um, I know right there in front of the finish line, we saw your race leaders go from taking the far right-hand side to the far left-hand side before it's all said and done as we get to see them coming through the pit area. And having to kind of check up here, the last thing you want to do is lay the motorcycles down here on this blacktop. We're actually able to watch a little bit here from the back of the Racer TV truck. And uh, they're throwing in that tight Monster Energy chicane there. Tight. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and I asked, you know, what's the point of making that such a steep turn? And they said, we really want to get these guys slowed down, uh, not carrying too much speed. The bikes are going to be wet. The asphalt's dry. Uh, we know what could go wrong with that. And so uh, possibly already seeing, is that one of the KTMs there? I'm trying to see who that was that already stopped. Stu Baylor checked in for third there. The that was one of the factory KTM yes, guys already stopping for goggles. Might have been Johnny Girard. Uh, so vision, uh, I mean, we can't stress it enough. It's definitely going to be a problem. Uh, and the standing water, it's not just like water. It's mud water. It's like paint that's uh, going to coat these guys. We see Craig DeLong on screen there. Shaking the hands off. And, and I feel like might have been Bollinger. Bollinger. Okay, yes. yeah, we're getting word from our producer, Adam Gordon, there. And, and I feel like grip is something we don't talk enough about. We, we kind of beat the vision thing to death. We know it's muddy, but the grip, it gets extremely difficult. The more the mud kind of gets caked onto those grips, uh, you'll start to see the rags being passed out as well. Riders just trying to hang on. Yeah, Ready? go ahead. Bad def yeah, definitely battle a little arm pump probably there. And, so, uh, and that was your points leader that just came by there. That was the reverse plate. So Craig DeLong, not where he's wanting to be right now at all. Uh, he, he was behind Rui Barbosa and Josh Toth there. They were just ahead of him by a little bit. And he was up further early in that race. I believe he was third when we saw that at the first time through Howard's Hole. So not sure what happened to DeLong there, but he has got his work cut out for him. As I believe that's DeLong right there, headed down, back down the hillside there. And you can really see how rough this track is when the riders go across it from our Yamaha live drone. It kind of looks flat. And then you see the riders going through, almost jumping through some of these sections. I mean, if people have never been to Snowshoe, this is a nearly 5,000 feet. It's 48-48, and it's nearly 5,000 foot ski mountain. So it's very, very steep terrain around here. The camera always doesn't show that, but it is a hilly, hilly circuit. Yeah, and just to give an example, that's higher than the highest point in Georgia where I'm from. I looked it up. So we are pretty high off the ground up here at Snowshoe Mountain, no doubt about it. Yeah, we were talking earlier. Not sure exactly how high you have to get for oxygen deprivation. I felt a little out of breath, but, you know, maybe I just haven't been, been doing my work. But uh, 
let's see, we're getting some word here. So 48, 48, about 400 feet less than Denver. So it, you can feel it at this height. There's no question about it. Well, you start and really feeling it around, you know, five, 6,000 feet. You notice it's very noticeable. So at 5,000 here, we're just under 5,000. So they're feeling it a little bit. Pass on screen there. Look at that. Seems like the, the momentum being carried into some of these corners. Seems like riders are able to push a little bit harder. And now you see them take that right-hand turn back down the hill. That's a, another one. Doesn't quite do it justice. A steep downhill there. And then they go rocketing back underneath that ski lift. And I, I'm a little jealous, guys. I have not gotten to go on it. I've been trying to find a way to work over there all day, but I have not been able to do it. But I've been told that's one of the best spots to watch. As Look at the top of your screen here, folks. All right, Jordan Ashburn coming around. Just trying to climb out of that wet roots, rocks, very, very steep climb. That's why the fans are gathering here watching the riders show their talents. But uh, by the back of the pack, some of the still, the PM riders are all still pretty accomplished riders, as we saw earlier. But it's uh, it's still to watch the riders battle that hill. It's tough. That's a tough climb. Well, and not only is it tough when they have the full track to pick a line, but as this race wears on and the majority of the racers are able to come through, it's going to have lap riders on it. Uh, I know this morning in the AM race, we saw three to four bikes stuck at a time on track as we're watching. I believe that's Liam Draper there coming across the finish line. Um, but yeah, it's going to make it difficult. Sometimes the riders, uh, there might be a lap rider stuck in the line that you're wanting to take, and all of a sudden you got to go a different way. So uh, it's going to be exciting to watch this race develop as there is another one. That's Rui Barbosa there in that XC2 class. And talk about the Phoenix Honda boys. They have got something figured out. They have been doing fantastic all year long. There is Craig DeLong coming across the line. And then that is Josh Tote there yep, coming Josh across. Tote. There you go. So having a solid ride there. It's Two. always fun for me when I come to the GNCC to hear so many two-strokes again. You know, it's just, Absolutely. I've gotten used to only hearing four strokes at the races. And the rare, is that Lane Michael? Is that uh, the 523? I couldn't tell. I think it might have been. Yeah, I know yeah, that yeah. was Wachowski behind him. Okay. Uh, it's hard to see exactly on the screen that, here. There. That was Wikowski. That was Lane Michael just ahead of him. Josh yep. Toth ahead of Michael there. Yep. So I'll give you all a rundown of the top 15 real quick. Ricky Russell out front. Jordan Ashburn in second. Jonathan Gerrard in the third spot. Ben Kelly is going to be sitting in fourth. And fifth is Stu Baylor. Liam Draper out of that XC2 class sitting in sixth place overall. Grant Baylor in seventh. Eighth is Trevor Bollinger. Craig DeLong and Josh Toth round out the top ten. Rui Barbosa, Lane Michael, Jonathan Johnson, Grant Davis, and Mike Wachowski is going to round out our top 15 guys. There you go. We're talking about Lane Michael. It's nice to get a sec he got a second place last uh, the, the high point round there, and uh, so the Mason Dixon race, and it was nice to see him kind of get back on that podium. He's had a tough couple of years, and, and uh, to see him out there done a privateer effort he's doing it on his own and you could see just how much that meant to him too when he came across the line uh, his his entire crew there the family uh, is really when you keep working and you, you battle adversity and you finally get what you've been striving for I, I think that was a, a big moment for him and uh, it was fun to call it kind of kept our hopes yeah. alive we thought we might have another new Very winner spectacular. but uh, no a huge shout out to Craig DeLong there getting the job done and uh, Lane even said he, I, he was, I was trying I wanted to keep it going but uh, Craig was just going too fast out there at the last round. So, no, and I'm hoping that confidence that Michael got uh, is going to carry him through the rest of this season and we get to see him continue to battle up there in the top five. But right now, I'm telling you what, Ricky Russell is the man on a mission. Uh, and Or, no, Jordan Ashburn is still back up front, correct? We saw that pass. I see it says Russell on screen, but I want to make sure. It has Ricky Russell on the computer. I was not watching the screen. I was checking the computer. Okay, so we do last our system. There's Toby Cleveland coming across in the XC3 class. Our system saying that Ricky Russell's leading the way. Jordan Ashburn in second. Next time we get the leaders on camera, we'll double check. I thought Ashburn might have made that That's at least when pass. they went through the finish line. Yeah. That's how they were. Anything could have changed by now. And we've seen it seems like a couple of those passes like they happened fast. It was like guy just clicked up a gear and slingshot around the outside. And so uh, line selection, clearly crucial. One line you think might be the better one, and it can actually slow you down significantly. Yeah, we saw that on camera there on screen where we saw Jordan Ashburn. He was easily ma make this, made his way or past Ricky Russell because he just had their best line. It was clearly a superior line. So uh, that's, uh, that's how it happens out here. 
And I saw Stu Baylor when they were going through Howard's hole. He was really changing up his lines. And after going down there yesterday, Zach, that is risky to say the least. Well, uh, it's not quite as risky as it was yesterday when there was just a mob of people almost uh, out of control, if I'm going to be honest. But I like Stu's creativity. I think he's the type of guy, uh, I'm sure he's probably been down there. As much as I've seen him bicycling around, I think he's made a trip down there and he's trying he, to figure things out. He was with us yesterday, actually. Oh, was he down there? Yes, in Santa? And that's what I mean. And Josh Toad. These guys are very uh, observant. They study not only the day of, but the day before. They're watching these race lines develop. And so Stu might have, uh, you never know, might have some lines inside uh, and really trying to see what works and what doesn't early in this race before he's got to kind of drop the hammer. Well, you were talking about how the fans, I mean, these fans actually participate. When you get down to Howard's Hole, you get yourself stuck. I mean, these bikes, most of these bikes have, like, fan straps on them where people are grabbing at the front fender and they're helping them yank out. But you were saying they're, they're helping these people by trying to grab their roll-offs oh, and they're doing, like, they're they're, they're like they're they're stepping over the boundaries a little bit. Hey, I don't need help. You pulling my roll. Absolutely. Here. And they're making their goggles go crooked, and they're and they're trying to be helpful. But after about 16 adult beverages, maybe they don't get your goggles on straight for you. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's funny. Bryson Neal even said in his after race interview, he was like, it worked out in my favor. I needed my roll off pulled, and one guy pulled it, and then Cole Richardson was like, yeah, well, I didn't. And when he pulled it, uh, and my goggles went cockeyed. And so you know, it's definitely the way the the riders and the fans interact. I think it's great when they're able to help with the four wheelers help get the bikes unstuck but there's a there's a line for sure but you know what when you come to snowshoe everybody signs up for it and you know exactly what you're gonna get right so. it's like you know i i think about some of the you go to certain there's a golf term in phoenix you know yeah it's really rowdy but guess what you don't have to you don't have to sign up for it if you don't want to have the it's, rowdy fans and the once a year thing it's a nice deal and that's snowshoe all over yeah we've been uh, there's a reason we've been hearing about this race in particular all year long yeah. and is living up to the hype speaking of howard's hole there is the number one jordan ashburn using that technique Technicality. Look at that, just in full control, able to tiptoe through there. Jordan, Stewie. or Stu, Stewie yeah, Baylor. got the feet off the pegs. Yep. And then Ricky, Ricky getting yep. hung up there for yep. a second. So Ricky slipped back to third at this point right now. Could have been bad line there. And there yes. is Ben Kelly Joe starting Kelly. to get up into the mix as well, bringing his teammate along with him. Yep. So Johnny Girard's made a couple passes, and Johnny stopped in for goggles we saw as well. And there's Grant there working his way up, dragging his feet, running, like I said, the trials tire on the back. Oh. Bollinger, then that should be Liam Draper coming through. Liam's having a, he's adapting real good. Absolutely. Well to this, uh, well to this. Yeah, so Liam, GNCC. that would be, uh, be, should be your new leader then, because I believe that's Barbosa. So. Liam is your leader. Barbosa is sitting in second in that XC2. Yeah. And look at this. You know, these are the best off-road riders in the world, and all of them got their feet off the pegs. <laughs> They're tiptoeing through. Dog, uh, I call that dog paddle. Absolutely. They are, they are absolutely dog paddle. But this, it, it doesn't even show how, this is actually a pretty good incline. You're coming up the hill here. It looks almost level there, but you can see the fans are kind of leaning into the hill this is this is no uh, this is no easy negotiating through that section right there and I have to wonder how much of this is not only just oh it's a faster line but they're trying to preserve the bikes as well if you go into those deep deep puddles uh, you could you could end up drowning the bike basically if you will uh, so these guys trying to preserve the bikes uh, as much as anything out there and you look at the exposed roots you look at the giant rocks the smaller rocks all of them saturated with water and mud so if you ever ridden a bike and you've just hit wet roots mud and these guys are the, some of the best in the world and obviously they're making it look easy but the average person would have a hard time even making his way through that section. I was about to say let me let me clarify folks I fell twice just walking down there yesterday yeah, yeah, and I'm just uh, I'm just trying no adult beverages involved just trying to walk it is insane I couldn't imagine trying to ride a bike through here and, and what is crazy is how much you can't see under these puddles how much there's these rocks sticking out there's roots um, just when you think you know what's coming it seems like a rock will throw your front end out or something like that so uh, no surprise to see the feet off the little little bit of stability as they work their way through there uh, and the fans as you see one of the rockstar husky guys there so all trying to direct give some lines there so one of the riders getting pointed out there and that's how about that so one of the rockstar husky guys helping out the whole crew trying to help the entire field just make it through howard's hole because here at gncc you're not just competing against each other you're competing against the track as well so it's uh it's brutal out here that yep. might be angus riordan possibly yep that was an all you know definitely switched lines there i don't know what is a reason for switch an abrupt change like that but uh, he lost a lot of momentum you got to keep your momentum in this to to make your way through it but you talk about this howard's hole 
this is the fans just usually they migrate their way about a half a mile away to the lake down there and they just walk right in with their clothes and all at the lake try to rinse off half the time you see them out there using that as the laundromat but uh, it's it's quite a mess down there yeah it is uh, something to say the least and now now Brock you're a taller guy like myself I would say being a little taller may be a benefit in a race like this where you're kind of having to do the dog paddling may have to dab a foot here and there uh, so could that play a role as well it might very well you know we have a couple of the taller guys Ben Kelly's quite quite tall himself Johnny Gerard's very tall these guys it might come to their advantage but again somebody is real technical at Jordan Ashburn when these riders like that he seems to be very very good in the mud in the slippery conditions and, and, and line selection is so critical yeah, and throttle control seems to be big too you're not seeing a ton of spinning there from those front runners I know we've seen a lot of that even in the AM race uh, riders as soon as they lose traction they just get hard on the throttle and they're just lighting those things up <laughs> it's not the way to get out of there that's for certain great way to spray the fans behind you that's, that's for <laughs> sure but uh, yeah and these are I guess I say with these guys still consider GNCC mud fleas those fans willing to, to yeah. sacrifice it all to give a little bit of help to the riders out there and uh, that's that's another key element of GNCC that's what makes this series what it is and it's so hard on you know visibility you're going in and out of the trees and the shadows you can't see the bottom of these muddy holes you don't know what's underneath there could be a rock and submerged understanding water and you, in, in and out of the shadows it's so hard to you know visibility is such a, an important part of it the goggles plan you've already seen riders on the very first lap stopping to get goggles so it's going to be a, an important thing to preserve your tear-offs wherever you can or your roll-offs and, and and see what happens but uh hanging out earlier with the scott goggles guys johnny knowles and his boys and yeah, it's a it's a tough section for the, this is a tough race for the goggle guys. Oh, I can only imagine and that timing too. It's it's like one of those things if you do have to ditch the goggles and then your face gets caked with mud on even when you throw the new set on, it gets on the inside of the goggles and you're in the same bad situation. So, and you, yeah, it's uh, an element of timing. And you're hoping to be, if you're going to ditch goggles, you want to do it real close to the pit area or somewhere near a, a mechanic where you can change and get some new ones right away because you don't again, you don't want your face covered with mud when you put a new set of goggles right over the top. And I'm curious to see as this race develops, clearly you're seeing that West Virginia sun popping out. Uh, the damage has been done. The rain came. But uh, do you think we'll see this track dry up? Maybe not in Howard's Hole ever. But uh, as the rest of the course, I think this, this kind of slop is starting to tighten up a little bit. The ruts are starting to hold formation. And so uh, being able to just push through the lines like they were earlier this morning might not be an option anymore. Well, Howard's Hole sits on the northern side of the mountain. As that side of the mountain is where the ski slopes are, that part of the mountain actually will dry out a little sooner, but the mud's going to probably get heavy. The south side is pretty, ju that's just slop and mud, and it's more of a shady side. And I, I don't know if that would ever dry out today, but uh, it's, uh, I don't know, Howard Hole, does it ever dry out ever? Yes, it, it, I believe we actually do it just for this event. We, there's a drain, and we unclog it so that we can have Howard's Hole, believe okay. it or not. All right. So so it's, oh, oh, oh. It, now we're starting to see the real Howard's Hole. What it's Sort of the mortals that I mean, this is these are very accomplished riders. These are skilled riders, and they're still starting to struggle. We've been watching the pros, and it's man, they make it look easy. Now let's watch what it really, uh, what the average rider or above average rider is going to do. Yeah, it is impressive to say the least. Uh, here at the Monster Mile, mile number one, uh, and that's another thing. Mile one, as now we're getting word we've got a new leader, ladies yeah, and gentlemen, Stu Baylor. Doing what Stu likes to do, jacking up the program and grabbing the lead here. Who is that? Jordan Ashburn now still in second. So good. Jordan's still up and rolling. And look at how much these guys have spread out as well. So these two, I'm telling you, Jordan and Stu, they just seem to be... And, yeah, it sounds like that might actually be beyond just the adjusted time gap there. So those not only leading on track, but possibly for your overall as well. I saw the, the KTM guys there. That was Russell dropped back to about fourth or fifth, it looked like. Ricky had dropped back quite significantly as well. So not sure. And and that's we have so many question marks just from what we can see in here in the truck. You know, did he go down? Did he get caught up from a lapper? Um, it, there's just so many options. Is now seeing one of the Phoenix Honda boys. I believe that is Rui. That is Rui Barbosa right there. Having a solid ride. And... Uh, 
And it looks like a, a decent little gap there back to the next group of riders. Just the tree roots, the mud, the rocks, the wet. <laughs> that, and it's, that's, a steep, that's a shadow, the steep hill. I mean, it's our camera really can't even adjust for the shadows and, and the bikes moving so quickly. There went Josh Toth on his two stroke there. getting harder and harder to distinguish the riders. They're all starting to become a common shade of mud. Thank goodness Grant and Stu, they have a little bit of a unique physique, so we can kind of pick them up pretty easily, I would think. Huh? I mean, Stu's <laughs> style, that doesn't, uh, got the legs still hanging off the back, but the throttle's wide open. He's uh, he's not afraid to leave it on, and uh, we've seen that all day long. Like we said, the best riders from the youth all the way up to the pros, and the, the old feet off the back, sometimes even getting tossed up off the seat. Still, they got to keep the feet out in case they tip over. Uh, uh, it's been some wild rides out here in these sloppy conditions at Snowshoe. And we saw how bunched up they were early, but I've actually been surprised. Uh, they're spreading out pretty well here. Um, we were debating back and forth whether we thought there was going to be a lot of pacing. Uh, I know, Brock, you talked about some of those riders with the softer tires maybe not pushing too hard early. Uh, and then as we start to get into the pit stops and stuff like that, you could see those wheel changes and really see some of the other riders come to life later in this race. I think line choice might be the most crucial thing here with all this time being gained and lost so quickly. That's the only thing that comes to my mind of what the difference might be is just the line choices, getting that good line and being able to just gain about five seconds in one line, one straightaway there. Absolutely, and I think it's only going to become more crucial as they start to work through the back end of the pack as well because the options that they had in the previous laps aren't going to be there anymore because you may have two, three, or more riders stuck in one section of the track. Looks like that might be another one of the Rocky Mountain ATV. DMC Teeley Energy KTMs there. Hard to tell the numbers with that shade of brown on each one of them. I'm telling you, <laughs> making it difficult on us. And uh, so this is down at mile four, and uh, still see you see the sunshine through through some of the trees there. But uh, I would say with that overhang there, it's going to be pretty hard to dry that section up before it's all said and done. Yeah, Zach, we're almost an hour in. We're getting on the 50-minute mark into this three-hour race. So we're almost a third of the way through this one. We should be expecting some tire changes, I would say, in a little while. So there we go. Stu Baylor dropping down, leading the way. He's opened it up just a little bit. There is Jordan Ashburn sitting in second place at the moment. We'll try to get a full run down here as they come through. See if we can find where Ricky at, Russell has fell to. These two have, uh, I don't know what they're doing here. They're trying to get away or what, but they have set their sights forward. That's Ben Kelly. And last we had seen, I believe it was his teammate behind him. Yep, there's Johnny Girard. So the two KTM boys tagging their way towards the front. Two of the taller riders we have in the starting line. Absolutely, yeah. And then there is Ricky Russell. So still up and moving forward. That was... That was Draper there that just went down. I believe that was one of the Huskies. Could that have been Bollinger, possibly? Possibly. We should be expecting Ruby Barbosa soon as well. And Draper, uh, I feel like one of, he is known, once he gets up in those XC1 guys, he's able to just grab a hold of them, and I think it just propels him farther forward when those XC1 guys spread out a little bit, and it takes him a minute as it does look like that is Rui Barbosa there coming through. Uh, seems like when he gets in the mix with those XC1 boys, he's able to match the pace and continue to work forward as we see Josh Toth there on that two-stroke still getting it done. And I'm sure the fans are coming to life every time he comes around. When they hear that two-banger going around, it just gets everybody excited. Zach, we've wondered all year long who we have there. Is that Trevor Bollinger? I do believe so, heading down the hill. So that could have been DeLong we saw earlier as well. It could have been. And we've talked about it all year, wanting, wondering when the XC2 was going to make it up there into that podium. And we've been told countless times that if it was going to happen, they think this would be the race with the start that we have. And uh, Draper, I've seen him riding around this weekend. He's he's feeling good. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, you know, it didn't give me just the usual, that ah, good. Like, he was like, no, I feel good. I'm excited. I, I'm excited for this. And they got to start on that prized second row right there as well. That seems to be the sweet spot. We've heard that yesterday, and it seems like uh, it's the same thing here on the two-wheel side. That second row, uh, even some riders saying the third row, they like being back just a little bit. You don't want to be sixth through 15th in points, but you do want to in this one race as far as the start goes. It definitely. Uh, works out and I mean in favor for those XC2 guys because they're the one and two in points they get to line up on those top few rows so 
Draper has a, a great opportunity right now, but the man taking advantage of what's going on out on track is the 514 of Stu Baylor. And you know we had to catch up with Stu earlier and hear from the man himself. Let's see what Stu had to say. I was absolutely out there. I, I strategically planned my, my bicycle ride to start just after Howard's Hole so that I could finish at Howard's Hole. And I started just at the right time to finish as the PM race started. So, best time you could be there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's one of those tracks like you, you can't help but have a good time. And um, it's also one of those tracks where I've been close a lot of times and never never been able to secure a win here. So, love to get a win up here. And feeling, feeling good, feeling good on the bike. We did a lot of rock testing this week. So, um, you know, it, 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 should, it should pay off. I hope it'll pay off and we'll know here in a few hours but uh, regardless, it'd be cool to cool to get out there and, and mix it up in front of this crowd. Yeah, I mean, honestly, since uh, since GNCC's made this track soft for all the all the moto guys, starting probably back in 2012 or 13, um, this is the roughest I've seen it. Now, prior to that, it's not the roughest snowshoe I think we're going to see. Like, like if if you race from from uh, what is it, uh, 08 to 2012, then you saw some much worse conditions. When we dropped off the other side of the mountain and rode the stuff that that side had to offer, the roots, the pine roots, the, the enchanted forest, I believe they called it back then, um, that stuff, what we've got today doesn't hold a candle to that, but man, back then it was a, it was a pushing race. It was a foot race. I can remember seeing the, the, the entire class stacked up. But uh, for snowshoe, since they've made it made it for the women, um, it is it is extremely extremely difficult. Uh, the holes have come out between the rocks deeper than I've ever seen it, and absolutely, it may I think it actually looks worse than the end of our three hours. Some sections that we've run for for ten years that have never done what they're doing right now are, are showing themselves in a whole different manner, and it's going to be it's going to be brutal. I mean, I, I think we're definitely, I, I would say it's safe to say that everybody's going to have to get off their bike at some point today. And as we take a look at one of our specialized rapid replays, it is the man himself, Mr. Stu Baylor, coming through the woods there. And uh, yeah, throw whatever you want at him. Roots, rain. I like Stu's style too. He lets the bike propel him back up onto the pegs if he needs to sit down. And uh, he's got something figured out right now. That whole Rocky Mountain ATV MC Teeley Energy KTM has been feeling good all weekend long. And uh, Stu's making the most of it as he is leading the way right now in your XC1 class. We're going to catch a word from our sponsors and take a quick break. We'll be back here from the Yamaha Racing Snowshoe GNCC. Yamaha YZ450F. Narrower, more compact, and lighter. Built to do one thing, go faster. Flexible financing options offered directly through Yamaha are available. See your local Yamaha dealer today. 
Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gaskets seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets sealing championships since 1989. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. Last season was my best season ever by far. I won a lot of races, I won a championship, and it was my, also my first year using Arma. And one of the things I noticed was just my ability to string good days together. You know, like especially in the summertime in Florida where you're riding every day and the heat index is 108 degrees and you're doing 230s and going to the gym and bicycle and, and all that stuff. I think in the past I've been super inconsistent day to day. Yeah, I may have a, you know, a good race here or you know, a good day during the week there, but overall I think where I improved the most was my consistency in my recovery. GNCC Racing is brought to you by Specialized. Specialized Turbo E-Bikes. It's you, only faster. And Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. And welcome back to GNCC Live here on RacerTV.com. Joined alongside Brock Glover, Zach Heron, Jackson Burrell, out and about. Going to head to the pit, see if he can't uh, stir up some drama down there. How about that shot? That and was my rental this? car. I just oh, you got my the... rental car. It was in the parking lot. Hey. All right, Brock Glover, we want you doing this in the rental okay. before you leave the mountain. <laughs> there you go, buddy. I'll do that. I mean, that's just as cool as it. I don't know if they, you know they want us to do this, but bottom line is it makes for a really cool social media post. That's Bryson Neal. That's Jerry. Jared McClure uh, and Cole Richardson celebrating the top three yesterday. Celebrate, celebrating surviving. I mean, a lot of people talk about the quads. It's actually harder to negotiate these this train. Oh, I don't bikes. doubt it. Those guys were worn out yesterday. Yeah. And they were congratulating each other even up on the podium. It was so cool to see just how much they get along and uh, how excited they were for one another. But uh, looking at the updated points as well, Bryson Neal still up there in the number one spot with 227 points. Uh, Hunter Hart sitting in second still. Uh, I know he's wishing he could do a little better here at Snowshoe, but had a solid performance inside the top ten. Cole Richardson just four points behind now in third. Uh, but, yeah, what a race it was. The Gator, of course, you got to mention him, sitting fourth in points. Um, but I think the Gator was still a winner out there <laughs> yes. yesterday. Yeah, it was a win. I'm, I'm still – I put on my tinfoil hat, and I'm like, yo, you did that on purpose. <laughs> just you mean broke awful down convenient. Awful Howard convenient. Toll on – quote, air quotes, broke down. No, yeah. he, it was a legit, legitimate mechanical. Um, but, yeah, heartbreaker. But, you know, you know uh, Adam McGill's still going to party. So this is where we saw earlier that uh, – That left-hand line. Jo yeah, it was quicker. Jordan Ashburn – Clearly went around Ricky Russell right here, but everybody's still wandering back towards the right. I don't know if something changed, but what we saw earlier, the left lane was faster, right? Yeah, that was uh, that was one of those ones where it wasn't even just faster. It was like he came out of nowhere. I don't even think uh, yeah. I don't think Ricky was expecting it. It's one of those things where he came and passed him so quickly. Could that be your leader there? 
And for some reason right now, it's just not seeming obvious. But again, we saw Jordan Ashburn come through there and just make an easy run up the left-hand side there. Riders left, that is. But it doesn't look like it's fast now. The things change in one lap. There's yeah. so many bikes on yep. the track. And the ability to see that and adapt throughout the race yeah. uh, is, is one of the crucial elements as well. As we see. Okay, we're going to find out here. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like it's getting pretty rough yeah, and sloppy. Still pretty sloppy up there, there yeah. yeah. Jordan Ashburn didn't make it look like that, did he? He was no, on the back no. wheel at one yeah, point. He was <laughs> flat out like it down the highway. But uh, it's easy to say when you're sitting up here looking at a monitor <laughs> a monitor of a drone shot. Oh, yeah, I'd do this. I'd do that. No, you wouldn't. You can't even yeah, tell. Right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's always interesting to me, too. You know, you, we've got the pros out there alongside the amateurs, and you'll see – uh, what looks like on screen, hey, there's the good line. The pro doesn't take it. And to the untrained eye, you're like, why didn't he take the good line? Well, because it's not the good line. That was made by Sea Riders this morning. He knows where the good line is. Here we go. And I was about to say, Stu Baylor and the rest of your lead pack there yep. are choosing that left-hand side. So uh, what doesn't work for some works for others. And Stu Baylor is making it work for him right now as he's going to be working his way up towards the finish line. And look at the rocks sticking out of this snowshoe facility. And, and that is for how stable the bike looked coming up that hill. <laughs> I mean, it is throwing you every which way. I'd say that fan's uh, facial expression summarize it. Mouth wide open. Like, yes. my goodness, how is he doing this? Yeah, this is a really steep hill right here. If you lost your momentum, the average rider couldn't get going again. But uh, you see, it's these guys make it look easy. Cross the fire road there and then right up a steep, steep bank right there and get drive again and get up the hill. But rocky shale, whoops, bumps, mud, you got it all. And these riders using every square inch of the trail all the way to the left hand side all the way to the right hand side searching for a little bit of smooth real estate there a little alternate line there i just noticed that and uh yeah. what looked to be the smoother line did not look to be the faster line yep now they're coming right off the trailer right where we're in the in our studio right here we can see the riders coming yep. out it's watch the stew coming There's towards us here stew, if he would have lost his brakes he'd land in our studio could come in for a chat seat. real quick yep and uh, this is another one of those uh, patience, I feel like, is oh. key through here. You can't get on the gas too hard, can't get on those brakes too hard, or you'll be sliding across the blacktop. And it looks like Stu going to try to get a little bit of hydration said, there. Oh. Yeah, he said one more. One he more, said, I'm go. good. Hey, by the way, guys, I'm leading this thing. Maybe I should go one more. <laughs> he looks like he's comfortable. No need to change anything. Watching here. I was going to say, is it going to be monkey see, monkey do now? Jordan Ashburn has checked in there. Um, yep. I know these two had a decent gap there. Looks like Ben is stopping. And we've seen that with the other KTM rider as well. I know Johnny had stopped. Trying to see what they did. They just switched goggles. It looked like almost twice. Uh, nope, spray, so. Spraying off the radiators a little bit, trying to clean them up, get some cooling. Did you see that right there? Ben Kelly checking the front forks. Looks like he double tapped on the front brake there. Took a quick look down. So we'll have to monitor that as well. Stu, a fan favorite, of course. I, I, I look at that. Was that a hand in yeah, the air coming to down me the hill? Like he was waving oh, to some people there. He's a uh, boy. I, I I hung out with him in the plaza the, two years ago, and boy, oh boy, he had uh, everybody <laughs> and their brother wanting to just have a minute of his time or a ten seconds of his time. He is a big fan favorite up here in uh, top of this mountain here at Snowshoe. And he's the type of guy he will give each and every one of those people sure. ten seconds at least. Oh yeah. Uh, treats everybody so so cool. Whether it's a kid, uh, an older fan, whoever it is, if you're a friend of Stu, Stu's a friend of you, and so uh, and good to see him out front there. As we saw, I saw Ashburn go down. So it looked like Johnny has Johnny gotten around yeah. while Ben was pitting there. So uh, those two going on alternate strategy there. Ben not far behind though, getting a little bit of hydration as well. And uh, these two opened up, or that front group there opened it up a little bit. Let's see. Don't believe that's one of our lead lap riders. I'm curious to see where Liam Draper has worked his way up to since the last time we saw him. Looks like there is your points leader. So Craig DeLong wow. making moves as well. Good he was way back there. Good recovery. Oh, that might have. Oh, yeah. Okay. Might have been Bollinger, Bollinger we're being told here. Okay. We'll see as they came through the finish line. Nothing yet. Still doing, well, drum roll. 30 seconds. Should be checking in. Okay. We're we look out the back of the studio right here. We're still seeing some of the top guys coming top guys through. And look at the speed that they're carrying through. 
You know, look at that. That uh, they're on asphalt. We're watching out the back of our breaking trailer. Bumps. They're breaking. They're like <laughs> literally I mean, like breaking bumps. You see the front fenders vibrating. You see the hand guards vibrating on the asphalt. They're breaking so that's hard right there. Ridiculous. That's, you're that's, also seeing the mud getting thrown down yeah. on that as well as the more and more yeah. riders go through. So that could make it even more slick as this race goes on. Yeah, I've never seen them break so hard on the asphalt <laughs> like that. To have your fender and your mud guards it's like watching hand, a corner of moto track right there yeah, coming out of it. Shattered and vibrating around as they head up. You can see other shale rock mixed in there and Stewie clicks into the finish line right now. We should be seeing on our laptop. And we should, we've even seen issues here in this scoring area today on that concrete slab there. You come into the scoring area oh, too hot, a little too much front brake, you're going to find yourself yeah. eating the concrete. So yeah. A few little gouge marks for some put, foot pegs, I'm sure. Stu Baylor checks in, 32 minutes, 48 seconds on the lap time, and still waiting on second place to check in unless... There was Jordan Ashburn, so he should, okay, so Ashburn. He should be popping up on... Yep. 17.635, the time gap between the two. I didn't catch Ashburn. No pit for him, I don't think. I wouldn't assume so. No, as close as he stayed. There's yeah. Johnny Girard, who I do believe has made up a little bit of time on that front duo. Ben Kelly coming along with him. Uh, and we know Ben has already made a pit stop. So we'll see how the uh, the pit strategy plays out as this thing continues to go. Uh, Stu saying he feels good out front. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm going to do at least one more. And... Uh, like Brock said earlier, we might be seeing some wheel changes as yeah. well, um, some tire swaps. So that's going to be exciting, just kind of throw in a whole nother mix. Anytime the standard quote-unquote yeah. pit stop uh, has another step added to it, it adds a little bit of drama. Uh, there is the 212, Ricky Russell. You talk about that pit stop. If you're going to change wheels, that's another 30 or 40 second. Right now, the two leaders have not pitted, and uh, the KTM teammates, Drawer and, and uh, Kelly, have, have looked like both have stopped. At least, at least Ben Kelly has. So he's 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 lurking there with a, a already already done his pit stop. So he's in a good position right now. Yeah, I'm curious what uh, what they're going to do as far as Gerard goes because it looked he did stop on that first lap, but I think it was strictly goggles. Not sure whether yeah. something happened on the yeah. roll-off system. Yeah or what, um, but they are not far behind at all. I think that they've definitely made up some time on this top two because we saw Stu and uh, Jordan running away with it there early as we're watching here trying to decipher the lap riders there from the lead group. That looks like possibly one of the Phoenix boys. That might have been Barbosa. Yeah, so far, uh, Baylor, Ashburn, Gerard, that's your top one, two, and three. Ben Kelly's checked in in fourth. Ricky Russell rounding out the top five. Craig DeLong, your points leader, boy, trying to make up some time. Had a, had a good lap, uh, but still sits back in the number six spot. Grant Baylor, the Grizzly, back in seventh. Josh Toth, by the way, welcome back to GNCC, Josh Toth. Good to have you out here this weekend and doing well. 206 is in the number eight spot. And as you said, Ruby Barbosa leading the way in the XC2 class. And matter of fact, only rider to check in so far out of the XC2. So that's a, that's a shakeup as well because yeah. Liam Draper was leading right. the last time we saw, and he was headed towards the front. So Draper definitely has had something go on. We'll see who this is coming up towards the front. That is Draper, I believe. 198? Yep. 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 Was that the 198? It looked like mine. Well, it one, looked like 38 yeah, to me. Yep, 138. I'm not <laughs> sure here. No, that was, that was Liam. 198. Okay. Yep. yep. And Lane Michael checks in behind him. Uh, or was it Lane? Now I'm losing track. No, Trevor Bollinger checked in behind him, but that puts Trevor up ahead of Liam because of the there's, first time. There's Lane on our screen right there. Headed down, down the hill, yep. On the left-hand side. Yeah, Draper's, uh, yeah, I can see a little moto style coming in there. He's, he's funny. Rode plenty of motos in his days. That's what I, was, I even posted on my social media earlier. I said, all my moto guys out there, uh, these guys aren't complaining about how the track's prepped. I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you throw whatever you want at these guys, and they're going to go at it wide open with a smile on their face. And they probably, and your moto friend said, yeah, but they're scared to jump. Yes, <laughs> yes I'm not going to lie. I got like three texts within oh, at I'm least sure. 30 minutes. So. Yeah, but. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, apples and oranges, we get it. And they are making the – I'm telling you what, you talk about the camera not doing it justice. I've spent pretty much all day down here at the finish line. For sure. Those ruts right here about midway in your screen are, I would say, beyond foot peg deep at this point. There's, you can't go through them with your feet on the pegs. Mm. Well, he kept one on his feet. Yeah. One thing. I'll but get coming it. up that hill right there, is, it's that's just a steep climb right there. It's, it's tough. We've seen some chaos. I've seen two loop outs already. Get up on the back wheel. You don't want to let off the throttle. Oh. And it just shoots out from underneath you. A couple riders being turned around there. And uh, I saw one rider earlier today getting stuck in the rut, got off the bike, and 
the bike just sat right there. He said, don't worry, I'm going to wait on you. Stand <laughs> up. You'll be fine. Yeah, I'll be here when you're ready. So <laughs> Get your breath. Take a little drink yep, of water. I'll be here. I'll be here. <laughs> gather myself, and then I'll uh, attack this later. Yep. And that is going to be uh, something worth watching as well as this race continues. It's uh, we talked about the way the soil is starting to dry up. What is that kind of that slot that'll shake off as you know they hit a couple bumps, all of a sudden it knocks the loose stuff off. But this stuff's kind of can start to get tacky. You can even see it on the helmets when it really starts caking on. Uh, going to make those bikes extremely heavy. Start to stick on the radiators as well. Uh, so the team's going to be focused on that. We've already seen several of the teams doing a quick spray on the radiators, trying to keep them wet, keep the mud from sticking on there, uh, and preserve the bike as much as possible. Yeah, just. Take it from 330 down to about 260. Yeah, <laughs> the way, yeah. <laughs> these bikes, they feel like they're over 300 pounds when you got this much mud on them, I'm sure. So, And then, you know, you think about the setup of your bike. You are you go out testing and you get your bike all set up and you set your ride height and you do your spring rates and you do all that. And then you go out there and you add 50 pounds on the thing in mud or 40 pounds. It's like it does change the thing. It makes it much softer. It uh, changes the way the bike handles. The forks feel too soft at times. So it's uh, it, it does... It, it, behoove you to have the, some of that weight come off and the mud to fall off a little bit. I'd love to do like a, a ride on scale, like well, a rider oh, in yeah. gear and bike before a race and after races. Now we're seeing the man, Stu, getting some help from the fans here, pointing them which way to go here at Howard's Hole, mile number one, the Monster Energy Mile. Yep. As our pro guys uh, roll through Howard's Hole down there, uh, just taking a look, Josh Strang hadn't checked in, finally did, back in 11th place, two minutes and 36 seconds back from 10th place, so maybe we keep an eye out, maybe something going on with Strang, I don't know, Jackson's down there in the pits, and I tell you what, if Jordan Ashburn is having some troubles, it's gnarly down there. He is, yeah. <laughs> his troubles are the 530 of Ben Kelly, yeah, he's coming up quick. And Ben's coming right up on Jordan, but Jordan, uh, he's the, he's that one lurking to me, if, uh, Ryder, he's the one, you, to me, you want to be worried about Jordan Ashburn. It yeah. seems like he's calm, cool, and collected. He's that uh, old bull, young bull story. I yep. once, once heard somebody tell me one time, <laughs> and that a little bit there. Yeah, Ashburn, we come to a place, they're all, don't, let's not take anything away from anybody, but when we come here to Snowshoe, uh, I even told them this, I feel like I'm always circling the name Jordan Ashburn, I'm circling the name Ricky Russell, and points leader Craig DeLong just came through right there, so Craig chipping at this I was going to say, Craig's been on the move, because he was close to the back of the top ten earlier. You know, there was a time in Craig's career where it was kind of like, well, that's going to be the day for Craig, and now I don't think so. I think Craig has the confidence and patience that, hey, I'm still in this, I can still make something happen. Well, we've been talking about that all year long. You had that many winners, and you're the first guy to get it done twice. Oh, one right Ouch. coming together with a tree. Tree, tree kiss. Tree's going to win that <laughs> one, unfortunately. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, we chuckle and laugh, but, boy, we've all been there. It's just, it's so difficult right now, and you can see some of the spotters down there trying to point the line, get their way in. I, I don't think there's a Cabela's or a, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. a Walmart. Is there any rubber boots left? There might be. Any, any rubber boots left? within 100 miles of this place. <laughs> I mean, every that's the you have to have that attire. Oh, yeah. And what's so interesting is these riders, these are the best in the world, and they're relying on your yeah. fans. They legitimately look and listen to it, the fans to guide them through this. <laughs> and I heard, to your point, you said, and sometimes that's good, sometimes it's not. Depends on how many barley pops they've had. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a reason to, to have some good fan interactions, <laughs> that's right? It, it's a yeah. reason to do the autograph that's line, you, for sure. Uh, to Stu's point, to your point about Stu, hey, that's why you take the 10 seconds with each fan. Exactly. 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 Everybody is more than happy to show him which way to go. As now we're seeing one of the Phoenix boys, I believe that is Barbosa. Past the beach ball. Yeah, I'm about to say. Yeah, right. We saw sure a couple of those run there. over yeah, yesterday, yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. That's going to wreak chaos on the two-wheel side of things, though. Yes. You can't just run right over nope. it. This is the exact opposite of what you would see, like, for those racers. If anybody's ever raced the Baja or Baja. Oh, Nelson. yeah. The fans usually down there, they're pointing you where, you, you know, they are pointing Don't you go somewhere. here. Don't go there. Don't yeah. go there. They're usually pointing you to the biggest water hole, the biggest place to get drowned out. Here, they're actually trying to help, <laughs> legitimately help. But this does look like the quickest line right here, as long as you don't do that tree kiss. And I believe that was Trevor Bollinger with one of the other Phoenix riders there behind. Actually, that might have been both of them. It looked like their, uh, their gear that they normally are wearing so Wachowski and Barnes were up there a little bit earlier we'll see where they were at uh, and yeah everybody it looks like for at least this lap kind of funneling into that one uh, right hand sideline there's Lane Michael right hand for the riders I guess is the best way to put it yeah see right. we're gonna see the right riders right here as the rider takes the extreme right here 
Well, Zach, what's your perspective on this, man? You were down there yesterday. It is a night and day difference from yesterday to today. And I'm sure you heard Johnny Gallagher talking about it, too. Hey, there are a lot of line choices down here. However, because of the crowd yesterday. So what's your take on that, man? Well, and what's been so interesting, I was listening to the Stu Baylor interview, and, and Stu, was he timed it perfectly mm -hmm. for the fans. He wanted to be down yeah, there yeah, for the yeah. PM race. And I don't blame him. I'm sure he was a star. I can't believe I didn't run into him at any point. <laughs> but when there is a sea, and I, that's no uh, exaggeration, right. a sea of people down there, you don't really get to exactly see what all is down there. I was able to go down there on Friday and get to look at this place without hundreds of thousands of people yeah. out there. And like you said, there's lines all over the place. And if you're creative and imaginative enough, it's a huge opportunity for all of these racers, especially on today, where you do have the freedom, where you're not fighting through crowds to go through there. Uh, yesterday, it was extremely fun. I had a great time, as did the fans and the racers. Uh, but yeah, kind of bordering on that almost too much line when they're yeah. jumping out in the track, when they're reaching oh, yeah. out. Um, it could get really dangerous, not only for the for the racers, but the spectators as well. Today, I think it is a huge opportunity uh, and one of the highlight spots of the track, not just because it's a fun spot to watch, but because it is a huge opportunity to make time up or to throw the race away. Yeah, and that's exactly what this rider here was doing, was you know rethinking maybe some of his decisions. Nah, I shouldn't have gone this way. <laughs> maybe I, I, I should have took this. the right side. <laughs> and I was looking at the, as they, the board came through, the leaderboard, and they looked at the 125 class. I can't even imagine trying to ride Bingo. a 125 two-stroke through there because this is a reasonable incline. You're coming mm -hmm. up out of our Howard's Hole. It looks pretty flat here, but that's just is the low point. You turn right here and everything out of Howard's Hole is up, 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 up. So you're trying to negotiate your way through there, slippery, and trying to drive a 125, and then you get a bike stuck and another bike stuck, and then there's a clog, and it just goes from there. So. And what is so interesting, I only, you know, I kept within a 50-yard area yesterday now when I was here's down there. a good camera shot yes. right here. There you this, go. Now we're starting to see. And as these riders move out of frame, the hole continues. This is not yeah. the, the end of it. It is a, a never-ending sea of getting through these giant boulders uh, and, and tree roots. You're almost underneath the tree roots at this point, as deep down as they've been able to get. And so, uh, yeah, it's a huge section out here on the course. And as the riders start to scatter across and litter certain lines, uh, it's going to make it not as many options. You're going to have to really count on those mud fleas to show you where to go. And the best part about it is the top guys, I think they're only going to have to do it, what, five times? I think it, was, yeah, it, it looks it, like a five-lap race today, <laughs> I think. So <laughs> they're only going to have to negotiate it five times. And they, our leaders have done it now. This will be the third time. So two couple, more. A couple more to go, boys. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. getting worse. It's getting worse since we started watching this race just an hour and change ago. Yeah, to your point, I mean, with as many riders are out there, it's constantly changing. It terrains. It's kind of like the weather up here. It's like yeah. one minute you got the jacket on, you're, you're cold. Then you got to take the jacket off and you're in the shirt. You're freezing. Yeah, it's very temperamental, as is the terrain. One rider already got a bike. Hoping crawl. the bike didn't say, yeah. I'm done. That thing's going to be there for three or four hours if it is. But uh, Stewie here's Stewie, Stewie coming down the stair step, negotiating rocks and roots and mud like nobody's business. It's like a controlled fall if he's coming down it those is. stairs because he is moving at a high rate of speed. And a little bit of a, if you're standing there, you can feel the earth shake just a bit under your feet. I'm telling you, I, if you yeah. got to. Uh, he comes full throttle anytime he's going. And uh, we're looking at the moss. You can tell right there, mm -hmm. right? Is that how you figure out which way is east, north, whatever? Yeah. You got the moss growing on the side of the tree. But uh, you can, if you got moss growing all the way up the side of a, a tree trunk like that, you know it's slippery. Is that a shakeup? I did not see Jordan Ashburn. Uh, I think you're right. No, there is there Jordan. Is Jordan. So, yeah. Ben Kelly making the move. And that is a dangerous thing. We're an hour and 20 minutes into this, not even halfway. And we start to see Ben Kelly coming to life. That's, uh, that's bad news if you're the 514 of Stu Baylor. There's Johnny Girard uh, getting word it's about a 32 second gap from Stu back to the KTM rider. So Ben Kelly on the move headed towards the front right now. And we know, uh, know the fitness is there. We know, uh, and I think this is something Ben needs. I think he's got himself Absolutely. in a good opportunity. And Ben needs to make the most of it and really get up there uh, because we all know Ben Kelly's got what it takes. Um, and only, only about 14 points off of Stu. And so, yeah, it's going to be exciting. I think Ben has got a little chip on his shoulder yeah. this weekend and is going to be charging hard for that first place spot. Well, and, and to your point, you know, this season, we typically have done 13 round seasons in the past. This year, it's a 12 round season. So uh, these guys, after summer break, they've got three races to wrap it up. 
Uh, I don't think it's going to be – yeah, Adam Gordon, our producer, said this is pivotal. He's absolutely right because, one, hey, you'd love to have that reverse play going into summer break. Two, you want the momentum. You want to come out for silly season when we come back as, hey, I'm the man. I got the target on my back. Come get me. And, you know, Ben is past champion and all. He's a top yeah. rider, and he's kind of had this last year or so. He hasn't really been able to perform at the level he's wanted to. Hey, don't – it's it's a little bit of that, you said, chip on your shoulders where you're like, yeah. you guys have already written me off kind of a deal. Don't be writing me off here. I can. I got plenty more wins than me, and, and that's what you're seeing. I think if Ben can pop off a win today, that would be a very big thing for his confidence and get the momentum going in his direction. Well, in a year like this, the spotlight's only so big, guys. You know, when we've that's got right. this many winners, this many riders to focus on, uh, when you do have two, three rides that aren't quite where you want, maybe you don't find yourself on the podium, uh, it's I don't want to say it's easy to forget, but it's, sure. it's just you've got to talk about what's going on because we've got such a strong XC1 class and so Ben Kelly yeah I think he's uh not just a chip but he's got a point to prove something to say this weekend and uh seen a new line yeah cut in. new line seems to be cut in up there on the top I'm not sure it's faster yet but you never know by the another couple of laps it could be a could be a little slider line there and that's an interesting point you bring up there Brock how many of these race lines that you see the riders the leaders taking on laps three and four they've actually been beat down and run over a couple times by some of the back of the pack and then before the leaders are like ah, it's, it's good enough for me <laughs> yeah. to take Take it now. I'll let you guys move all the heavy stuff out of the way. Uh, so, yeah, line selection. These guys are constantly scanning, watching the way other lines develop. Um, curious. It's almost like they got a little catalog in their head. Yeah. Like they're not busy enough. You right. Know, as far as, oh, I'll think oh. about this line later on. Hey, you know what's crazy? Last uh, two seasons ago when Stu was trying to track down, uh, you know, coming off the injury, trying to track down Ben Kelly for the points championship. You know, he was so far back, we, we all thought, well, there's no way he's calculating points at this point. He just wants to go out and win. And I said, Stu, what it's going through your head out there. He goes, oh, no, I was doing the math. Okay, if I get first, sorry, Ben's back in third. He, start, he can get the abacus out, <laughs> the pencil, the paper. It's incredible. And there he is on screen just, just doing his stew thing. And that's such a good point. Just a couple of weeks ago, uh, I noticed we even said in the broadcast, oh, I'm, I'm sure they're probably not telling Stu where Craig's at this and everything. We were wrong. Uh, the yeah. team even told me there has been there, and that Ash looks like that gap is coming down. Coming down. I was about to say, yeah, they're walking towards the front. Uh, but you, to your point there, Mike, yes, Stu likes to to be aware of not only what's going on with him, yep. but the rest of the field oh, yeah. as well. Yep, yeah. so cutting that lead down to 15 seconds. We got a race on our hands. Um, and I'm sure Stu's probably being made aware of it from his team, uh, counting down the gap. And I'm sure he's probably getting some pointers as far as who's where as well regarding points as we see Johnny, Johnny Girard. Girard yep. Yeah, Johnny's kind of having a quiet, good ride, too, he there. Is. He's not far off that podium battle. I like it at Snowshoe, though. I mean, it seems like, hey, first hour and a half, go out there. Don't be, don't ride above your head. Ride within your own helmet. Make good decisions. Make sure you're in that fight when we get into the second half of the race. All right, now turn it on. Go get him. Yeah, you'd think right now that Ben Kelly made up, I mean, it's got 10, 15 seconds mm -hmm. just in the last five minutes of the red. So that's a big chunk he just took out. So... And it'll be uh, exciting to watch. Like we said, Ben's been needing this one, and we were able to catch up with Ben a little bit earlier. Went out to California and did some testing with the team, trying to get more comfortable on the bike, and I feel like we did that. So uh, looking forward to coming into this race. It's obviously going to be a little bit different. It's super rocky here, and um, it's kind of one of a kind. But uh, I really enjoy it, and uh, looking forward to it. You know, the format. The different start and everything and uh yeah starting on the front row and yeah i feel good about the track i you know looked at pretty much everything and uh i'm expecting it to get gnarly and slippery but uh yeah just excited for it um obviously it's a little different too with everyone wondering what tire to, to choose and whether they're going to change a tire or not so there's some team tactics that for sure go into play but yeah i think we have a good plan set in place and i'm ready to get out there i think just back then i was you know younger and still learning and obviously was a solid rider and um you know i think i probably had what it took to win but i had never done it at before so you know you really don't figure it out until you finally get it done and, and it clicks but uh yeah i had a good race then and uh yeah it was good to start up front with those guys and, and battle with them and um yeah, be in, the, be in the fight, but I, for sure, you know, that last hour I fell off that year. and I still ended up on the podium with third, I think, but, uh, yeah, nowadays I'm just stronger, fitter, smarter, and, uh, yeah, know how to, uh, I guess, know how to execute the races. Um, I haven't been doing it all that well this year, fortunately, just struggling, obviously, but, yeah, hoping to get back to that today.
Hey, Brock Glover, he got that Dunlop shout out in there for you, buddy. So, hey, Ben Kelly, he's on the move trying to track down Stu Baylor. We're going to take a short break, get a word in from some of our sponsors, and then we come back more from the mountains. Snowshoe GNCC here on Racer TV. Tires, a division of Greenball Corp, has been in the tire business for over 44 years. We're passionate about developing quality tires that perform great and bring extraordinary value to our customers. a tire that can handle your off-road adventures, need a reliable tire to take you from job site to job site, or simply want a tire with a beefier look that won't break the bank, then check out Kanati Tires. United States Motorcycle Coaching Association has been setting a standard for motorcycle coaching since 2016. Coaching is important for all riders, no matter the age or skill level. The USMCA connects riders with coaches, whether the rider is just starting out on their motorcycling journey to a competitive amateur racer looking to reach their next milestone or the professional athlete trying to clinch a title. Download the Motorcycle Coaching app and get connected to a USMCA certified coach today. How would you like to go to a school where we take into consideration how students learn best? Well, we do that. Because we find if we can build the curriculum around the things you are interested in, you're going to do a better job. The mission at On Track School is that educational success is possible while chasing your dreams. Not only will our staff help students to achieve success, they will cheer you on to the finish line. We encourage you to check out On Track School at ontrackschool.com, where we can help you chase your dreams and still get a quality education. OnTrackSchool.com, check it out. In the premier form of off-road motorcycle racing in the world, it's the beginning of a new era. 17 Supercross, 11 Motocross, and those three playoff rounds. Super Motocross World Championship Final. Tickets on sale now. Visit supermotocross.com. 32nd card is up. We've talked all about it. We've watched practice and qualifying. We've theorized. We've been traced. Now it is time to go. Racer up. Side by side we go. Jet Lord, Justin Cooper in front of the crowd. get up in the mix. They have been 1-2 in the last seven motos of this championship. Here we go. Every race, every day, in every way. Print, social, digital, video, photo. Every race, every day. Every result, every story, every rider, Everything. Moto every day. With Racer X.
2023 ISDE Championship Golf Tournament. Stu Baylor lining up for a putt behind me. What a shot. It looks like some potential. Look at that confidence already from Baylor. Stu Baylor, what a shot here. We saw it. Looks like you put it on the green. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling solid. I'm feeling solid. These guys don't stand a chance. What's it going to take for you to bring home the championship hit? Uh, a lot more than that. A lot more than that. Like a good second shot. A good second. Where our drives are killing it. Our third shots are good. Whatever it takes here to get the golf championship win. Stu Baylor, look out. Absolutely. It's a sold-out golf tournament here for ISD. We're here for a good reason. We're back to the 2023 ISD. Golf Championship, Jesse Ansley lining up for the shot. There was deliberation about the club. <laughs> you guys have just seen this fantastic shot here. Jesse Ansley, man, how are we feeling right now? Uh, well, hopefully I feel a lot better Sunday. We're just out here having a good time, which we'll have a good time Sunday, but uh, I'm not playing too well. Luckily, my teammates are holding it down for us. We're running probably like a good 69 scoreboard. So, yeah, I don't know. Just having out here supporting the cause, and, yeah, we're just having some fun. Now, there has been some concern that you may leave the GNCC Series to go join Liv and the other golf competitors. Are, are you safe racing? Are you going to stay on two wheels? I don't know. We're going to decide after the 18th hole today. It's going to be a tough decision, but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep everyone uh, <clears throat> curious and stay tuned. Strong performance on the track and on the course. Jesse Anson. Back out here at the ISD Golf Championship. Zacho, not going to be on the bike this weekend, but you are swinging the club. Uh, how you, you having fun out here? Yeah, I'm having a blast. Uh, finally starting to feel myself again uh, with my leg and um, just coming around. So it's nice to be here to support ISD, uh, something that's near and dear to my heart in, uh, in off-road racing. So it's cool uh, to be out here and uh, playing play some golf with the boys. Now, we know you're no slouch on two wheels, but I hear you're no, no slouch with a golf club either. You putting it to these boys? I don't know about no slouch. Um, we've used a couple of my shots today, so that's all that matters. Um, we're four under. This is our ninth hole, so I'm sure we're going to get absolutely smoked, but we've been on this, so we can sleep tonight. There you go. Good to see you out here, and great to see you back out of the track soon. Then. Ten seconds! <laughs> oh, that was cool, man. Uh, Zach, you sound like you do about as much golfing as I do. Let me tell you guys, I had absolutely <laughs> no idea what I was talking about, but we had a great time out there, uh, uh, as did the rest of the riders. Uh, oh, safe yeah, to say, uh, yeah. I'm going to, Jesse, I'm going to go out on a limb here, man. Don't get off the motorcycle, please. Uh, yeah, no, no. I, I, Liv called. We had a chat. They're, they're going to wait till next year, I think. But, uh, no, everybody had a great time. We saw so many smiles out there, uh, guys laughing it up. But, uh, yeah, no, golf, not my thing. Talking about the zeros in Jesse's contract is going to be the point zero 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 zero. Is that what you're talking about? That's the one. It's not the seven figures. It's all before the decimal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was, uh, it was a great time. And who was one of those swings that we saw out there? Uh, you're going to have to give me some lessons or something there, Brian. Uh, no, I, I don't think so there was uh, <laughs> no it was a great time there and uh, uh you're you're oh so humble yet again look at these uh yeah these get sort of the back of the packers making it look like how i feel riding out there i think coming up those hills man just starting to dry out though at least the sun has been out and cooperating course is certainly drying up on the at least on the north side of the mountain but i'm gonna see if we can pick up the leaders here What's our laptop say over there since we can't see much of anything here? Um, Do we have a student? About four and a half minutes yeah. before they should be checking in for okay. the check or for the, yeah, not checkers, excuse me, the finish line. Sorry about that. Yeah. Everybody at home Everybody said, just no, wait panicked. a moment. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, oh, and also again, a five lap race. Don't forget, we've got a five lap race here, so. And down I, into the thick of it. Yeah, we're really going to start to see the, stretch at the pit strategy come into play yeah, as well. I'm that, curious to see. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, Brock, what do you think? What has to be happening for a team to feel that they have a justified need for a wheel swap or that level of a 30 to 40 second difference? Like, uh, short of it being a flat or something like that, that's an awful lot of time for them to sacrifice. It is. I mean, unless the knobs are completely gone on one of those gummy tires, I would just go, I can handle it one more yeah. lap. Yeah, that you know, you're you're not only you're talking record time, a record time, no mud, no pressure. You're talking thirty, 
Yep. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So Baylor. here's Stewie here. So you got 35 to 40 seconds is like their record change, and that's with no mud, no pressure, and so boy, it's a it's a big it's a big decision to make. And so obviously Stu's made that decision. It looks like so we're gonna we're gonna see. And that's going to be said. We talk about it all the time. The whole pit crew has got to be firing on all cylinders here. Um, and I'm sure these guys have done practice stops. They've put it on the stopwatch. They've done a run up pressure situation. I'm using air quotes there. Um, but there's nothing quite like it. It's like these guys riding. You can practice yeah. all you want. But when it's race time, it's something about it's a little different. Yeah, you start putting a wrench on a, a nut that's got caked with mud and doesn't fit right away. So then you panic out a little bit. It's just there's all little things. Takes extra second here, four seconds there, five seconds, and yeah. a fumble here. And next thing you know, you got 30. 30 second error and it's it's too much to overcome in this GNCC because we're halfway through right now we got an hour 24 left and we'll see what happens when the guys hit the pits I feel like running out our back here and going watching this pitch could that here. be one of the factory KTM's coming up the hill Ben, ben Kelly yeah. a new leader hey, look at uh, that yep yeah. You saw the form. I, we Kelly. didn't miss two, did we? No, I, not that I know of. I just, Adam, I believe, just chimed in and said that that is a new leader popping out. So, yeah, it looks like Ben Kelly has taken over that number one spot. We said he was on the charge. There is Stu There's Baylor there now coming up the hill. So, still in it, still up and running. Okay. And, and then... Ben is on standard GNCC style tire, not a gummy or anything, nothing special, no trials tire like we saw with the Grant, or in the, and so Ben should not be worried about a tire change, and he's coming up into the pits here. We're going to be able to look out our back studio window here, and there he is as we see the leader coming right towards us. Looks like he's plenty comfortable. As we are watching out the back of the racer TV truck, yep. trying to get a glimpse of your leaders as they come through. Through that chicane. That's a tight one, too. As watching, looking like He's Ben Kelly not stopping, so. Yep. Yeah, there was no reason for Ben to stop there unless he had goggle or fuel issues, but uh, shouldn't be a problem. Here comes. Is that Stu right there? That is. That is Stu. Stu yep. coming into the so pits Stu. now. And uh, I say right there, meaning not on the monitor, meaning out our back window here. So we can, uh, yep. Doing a little bit of in-person calling here. Yep. As we see Ben Kelly ducking off into the woods there. But what an advantage this is going to give for Ben Kelly right here as we right. get Stu Baylor coming into the Tealy Energy pits. Do they stick with the game plan or... Hey, like, yeah, we'll get Brock's input on that. I, I want to hear it. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Do you want to be Ben right now with the big lead, or do you want to be Stu with the freshies? Ben with there the big you go. lead. And uh, knowing that I just have to manage this tire. Another couple laps, but you can see right there, the tire doesn't look that bad. But, again, this is, you know, again, I was told their record change was 36 seconds. Now, just what I exactly what I talked about, that axle's not coming out. They're trying to get it out. They're having to use a wrench to pry it out further. So right there, it cost you five or so seconds. I'm kind of surprised they didn't immediately go to the back tire with the pressure washer. Just try to clean that out. Yep. Um, and I do believe that we've got the watch on this to try to let you guys know exactly. Yep, I'm looking at least 45 and probably further than that. I think we've got an official uh, timing Stop here. I noticed yeah. uh, if you saw Stu Baylor not only getting fresh goggles there, immediately taking the gloves off, drying the hands off, and getting yeah. fresh gloves as well. Yep. So he's going to have fresh grip, fresh vision and fresh grip on that KTM as well as we continue to watch here clock still running yep they're well over a minute into this change right here and Stu very uh, charismatic I feel like we would know if he was a uh, minute yep. 20 is yep. what we're getting told here yep. I'm just counting on my fingers and toes and I had at least a at least minute 15 and I I'm trusting the minute 20 was more accurate than mine but uh, yeah so there goes your uh, best laid plans of mice and men right there was there you uh, the, you know, uh, 36 seconds is our record so let's say we can do it under 45 or 50 yeah right a minute 20 and uh, later and that's what that's what mud and reality and race pressure does to you it's uh of the list of things that could have gone wrong though i mean definitely not the worst uh, good. stop that yeah. they could have had yeah. um we've seen even earlier this year uh several riders uh, even when they were doing the air filters we had some mm -hmm. issues with that so this thing's not quite over yet but ben kelly Making a yep. making an interesting point, making a race out of it. Uh, been pitting a little bit early, and so we'll see whether or not he's got to stop again. As we're seeing one rider getting caught up there. Look at that, left, right, left, right, pushing it up the hill. Yep. And the uh, rocks continue. You can see just how 
hard those bikes are jolting around. Uh, you hear square edge bumps talked about a lot. Well, I can promise you when it's a rock, mm -hmm. square edge is all it is. Rider right there on the bottom of our screen stalled out coming out of that corner. The rocks are starting to come to the surface. Yep. So the two lap car being held out. Ben Kelly coming across the line there. So we'll start to be able to give you an idea exactly what that gap looks like and uh, find out who else who was able to get around Stu, if anyone, while he was getting the uh, the tire done. And so, everybody watching the tree line here, the fans hanging out on that hillside. And uh, it's been it's been a brutal spot all day long. As we can see, yet wow. another rider get just just keep the keep the feet off there, guys. Just and every rider that does that just burns away a little deeper, deeper into that rut. As you see, this has just gotten a lot Ashford. more difficult. So That's one of the very best riders in all of GNCC just made it look a little bit challenging. So you can imagine what it's really like. Yeah, absolutely. As that is the Magna One Husk Barn of Jordan Ashburn coming across in second there. So Ashburn has been able to get around. He's in second and 49 and a half seconds back from Ben Kelly. That could that have been Gerard? And Gerard. So, so both Ashburn and Gerard now in in front of Stu Baylor. Now I don't know, Johnny. Did you see either of those guys pit this uh, last lap? Uh, they both did pit. I believe. Both did pit. Okay. I think our only tire change might have been Stu at this point. Right. Well, at least what we know. We know that, that we know of. Toth yeah. is running a gummy. We know that Grant Baylor is running a complete trials tire. Um, I don't see the trials tire being a problem with wear. I was actually, I, I'd have. Craig, I think. Yeah, I'd like to go over there and look. Craig, the long coming through. Yep, I'd like to look yep. at Stu's tire to see if he really needed to, but I don't know that it could have gone two more laps. Craig DeLong, as, as we were mentioning earlier, Zach, he, he's on the move. He's been patient. Now the two lap card's out. Now it's time to go. He's up into a top four spot. He's 31 seconds back from a podium. And finally, the 514 Tele Energy KTM of Stu Baylor checking in in fifth place, 20 seconds back from Craig. And a mile, I mean a mile away from Ben Kelly Let's at this see, point. Two, two minutes plus from Ben. At, at least, yeah. Yeah, he's got his work cut out for him. And as far as our points leader go, you hit the nail on the head. He's waiting. It's uh, an hour and 42 minutes. The two-lap card coming out. He's worked his way into that fourth-place spot. Now is the time I think we're really going to start to see Craig DeLong come to life, as that is Ricky Russell coming through there. Uh, I'd like to see a little resurgence from Ricky as well, see if he can put on a late-race charge, get back up into the mix after starting so strong. But, uh, yeah, Stu's got his work cut out. Grant Baylor. Grizzly. Coming through there. And looking like, uh, looking like Grant might have had a fresh set of goggles. I'm not sure whether he got those before or whether he pitted and got those. And taking a look there. I mean, these... So that's the lane, that's riders left, our right lane. <laughs> What's the other one look like? Cause they're all going over that that's side. That's a really good point. <laughs> yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like you from, from the monitor. It's like, hey, switch lines, switch lines. But I don't think uh, that other one's maybe no gym either. Well, we talk about that, we see the backside oftentimes, the riders are coming towards yeah. us, but we don't know the monster that the face is as yeah. far as what they've got to go to get on. Uh, there is Toth. Toth. Oh, and through. Josh Toth. And you said Josh Toth did change tires? Okay, he okay, did, so yep, because he was the one also running a gummy. He was running the DOT, what's called the EN91. It's the Dunlop model. It's a DOT-approved tire that's more of a European Enduro or ISDE legal tire, but he was running the gummy version of it, and he was the one that had it mounted backwards to yeah. have the less aggressive tread. Maybe it would last a little longer, I believe. So interesting, interesting tire choices, and everybody switching around and... Uh, but the, the standard tried and true seems to be leading the race right now. Yeah, Ben Kelly out front, two lap cards out, three laps into what'll be a five lap race. Ashburn, the number one, the defending champ up into the two spot and Gerard running out the top three. Another goggle change right there on the hillside. Doesn't necessarily have to be in the mechanics area, yeah, right? Yeah. That's right. Yep. As you long as it's help. not in the scoring area. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. We've seen, I saw a couple riders this morning, even right before they came across the finish line, stopped real quick, threw a fresh set on, clicked on another lap. So, yeah. Uh, looking like that was one of the Phoenix boys. It was Rui, I believe. Rui Barbosa, boy, he was rolling early in this, and he's faded just a little bit. But uh, rounding out the top five, sits second in class, Liam Draper, as we saw uh, the 198 Ampro Yamaha checked in before him. Okay. Yeah, Liam's having a nice 
methodical climb towards the top of that XC2 class. He's uh, been riding very well last few weeks. But Mike Wachowski in there as well, just checked in at 11th, the 282 Phoenix Racing Honda. So two lap card out, Ricky Towery, the true north of GNCC, as I like to call him. Uh, because, I, I like that. Because, I heard that earlier, yeah. dude, and yeah, it's, it's dead on. It's one of those things I have no idea what's going on. I can't distinguish what rider is what. Sure enough, Ricky Towery, even if I tell him, because I'll admit, folks, at one time I thought Ricky Towery might have made a mistake. I'll never think it yeah, again. Yeah, don't do that. So, I did, too, yep. yesterday. I made yeah. that mistake as well. Yeah. yeah. So I was I was schooled. I was laughed at, and I've learned <laughs> from it. Uh, so, yeah, the true north, I, I'll trust him. Whatever he says, I'm going with. It, it, at the finish line, if you hear Ricky go, here we go. You know it's you on. You know the leaders are on their way. I start getting antsy when the yeah. flag goes behind his back. Yep. Just yep. something about it makes you want to stand up. And look at that. Talk about standing up. Ben Kelly, feet on the pegs there for that first little bit. And then having to go to the old uh, tried and true. Wait, wait, look way too easy. Yeah, I didn't like that. I like <laughs> that. Way yep. too easy. He's got a little longer legs. Just <laughs> makes it look really, really easy, doesn't he? It's six foot eleven frame he's got. <laughs> ben Kelly hunched over the handlebars. We'll see. Yep. Uh, now, when they came to the finish, uh, the, the gap back to Ashburn, 49.668. And then Gerard, another 16 seconds back from him. So, and Kelly got some breathing room here. Yeah, and I mean, he, he climbed up rather quickly. It's like he yeah. dropped the hammer and decided I'm going to move forward uh, and pretty much hasn't been able to uh, get the job done as far as dropping the rest field. I thought I saw one of the riders coming through there. We've seen several different uh, grabbing, locking up the front brakes, I want to say. I saw it yesterday in person, um, and then I saw it earlier today in a different section of the track, but they get on the brakes a little too hard, lock up on some of these rocks. As There's Ashburn, one of the riders getting out of the way so that your leaders could come around and Ashburn got up that one without a whole lot of issues. I yeah, think he's man. feeling good. And Gerard's on though. him. Johnny yeah. Gerard, he's closed that up significantly since the last time we saw him. Yeah, you mentioned that with Ben Kelly, though. At one point, there was a, a, a nearly 30-second gap with uh, Stu Baylor there. And within less than five minutes, it was down to 10 or 15 seconds. And yeah, he just put the hammer down there just after about an hour and just closed it up. And he seems to have another gear right now. Absolutely. And uh, like we said, Ben riding with, riding with a reason right now. I think he, he's trying to switch the momentum, and what a time to do it going into the summer break as well. And so we'll see whether or not the factory Red Bull FMF KTM rider is able to bring it home right now. Stu Baylor choosing to switch that tire. I believe it dropped him back to fourth, fifth uh, there in that XC1 class. Uh, fifth. Fifth, yeah, fifth okay. OA, yep. Yep, you have to, and when this is all said and done, you're second guessing yourself and your Monday morning morning quarterbacking, you're going to go, okay, was that hour and 20, or a minute, 20 minute tire change really worth it? And the fact that, you, you know, you realize, did I make up a minute and 20 by running that tire early on? So I think that would probably be the answer to that question. I doubt it. <laughs> it's uh, definitely a gamble, but if there's anybody I feel like willing to, to gamble for the chance of winning yep. Stu's gonna gonna take the take the chance and so uh, it'll yep. be exciting to yep. see how that plays off you never know it could be the last couple last couple minutes of the race and all of a sudden it shows the, the reason why he needed to make that stop well uh, it's what makes snowshoes so fun I mean there's so many different Ricky. conditions and it's really it makes it uh, the everybody the strategies involved from the goggles to the pit stops to the tires and then Ricky Russell going by there but it just <laughs> what makes this race so unique Ricky Russell's ability to, to make a game time decision right there at the last second. Grant Baylor, not too far off his pace. Had a left rider in front of him. He said, ah, that's fine. I'll take the harder side. Yep. Over right. here on my left. Do what I no got to do. Deal. Saw Stu go through there earlier as well. Um, don't think he's shaved off too much time, but definitely methodically through Howard's hole. This guy said, I'm <laughs> sick of not being able to see. I can't stand <laughs> it. Yep. I don't have my factory mechanics and pit and crew yep. and... Yep. Yep. Mom, dad, and girlfriend spread around the track yeah. aren't quite doing it. Right or, or my, yeah. Liam Draper, Ampro Yamaha still, I believe, leading the way for that XC2 class. Hadn't seen anybody get around him. And we're getting, you can tell we're over the hour and a half mark. Now I got some guys kind of sitting on the side going, let me think about this for a moment. Look at and Josh there. Toth, let's go. He's on Two a fresh tire, too. Two stroke Toth. I like Not it. Not coming off the foot pegs, Johnny Gallagher. I mean, That's right. I shouldn't sing his praises. Last time I think we did that, the next lap around, he had a couple dabs in there right after we were talking about how good he does. The there. announcer's curse. Sure. It was, for sure. 
Yeah, no, he was looking good, though, and uh, he had a lot of momentum coming up that yeah. hill, too, especially. Toth is such a great technical rider, just stellar. Love having him out here. I think he qualified for Loretta's, too, if I'm not mistaken. They're going to show those Moto Boys. show the Moto Boys yep. little thing. Well, that's going to be uh, fun. I'll be down That'll there. Be fun. I get to go good. watch him I'm, down there. I'm, I'm excited about I, that. I haven't been to Loretta's in a few years, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, go, I'm going this year. I'm kind of hoping Stu, Stu Baylor came out there last year and, and called. I was blown away. Stu Baylor, to your point, you were saying, hey, he wants to know about himself and everybody else. He was up there calling amateur Loretta Lens racing with us, and he knew every guy from first through 15th. Yeah. I mean, he is just, he's entrenched in it. Well, I know out there at the Shoals, they've got a lot of those riders, uh, including the ones that are racing here in GNCC. They run the full series. Yeah. They've already qualified for Loretta's, yep. and uh, when we asked them on the podium, what's your plan for summer break? Put my head down, start training. We're going to Loretta's to try to Heck win a championship. Yeah. So, yeah, excited Rui stuff to Barbosa. see. There's Barbosa coming through. Man. Rui had a, a, a great uh, – he's doing well, don't get me wrong. But, boy, he he's faded a little bit as this one's gone on. Uh, I'm trying to see. Okay, he is behind Liam Draper in front of Mike Wachowski. So okay. and then I there was is mistaken. I believe that was that. Riordan that just came through there on the KTM. Trying to. Gus has had some up and down. He's had some good finishes and some sevenths and eighths, and I think he would like to have another good one. Yeah, good absolutely. one here. So. Oh, we saw him have a good performance in the mud as well. So, uh, yeah, it might be. Uh, Gus reared and or Angus reared, and I got to hand it to him. He's back in six when he checked in with three completed. Okay. So he got around Jonathan Johnson, Grant Davis, and Wachowski. Wow. So those guys had some trouble somewhere. And that's what I mean. We're an hour and a 51 minutes in, and there's still so many things that can happen to shake this stuff up. As far as uh, we've seen riders rapidly make their way to the front of the pack, and we can see how quickly it can change as well. So it's going to be exciting to see here looking oh. on our list here. Draper uh, worked his way back up into that number one spot, and he's been pushing hard. Hey, Brock, I know you got to take off, man. Really, really appreciate you coming in here, hanging out with us, calling some rides twice this year. Absolutely. Just we got lucky. Get you, we got to get you on the schedule, man. I, that was be my pleasure. It's really, really great working here, and I love coming to the GNCCs. It's just another form of racing and on two-wheel motorcycles, and, and we, uh, we're all big family, and this is the event uh, I, I want to come to every year for GNCC, no question. We'll get you down at the hole next year, right? Uh, man. <laughs> I yeah. went one time. I came back so That's muddy, it. so dirty, and if anybody knows me i don't really like to be that dirty that often so <laughs> spent, six spent, time come on now go, yep there we go we got another uh leader going through there. there ben kelly ben kelly making it look easy but no absolutely we appreciate you coming up and calling and uh, jumping in on the action giving us some insight on the tire choices as well that's been really interesting to see how that develops throughout the race and uh, we can't wait to see you next time yeah you're welcome thanks and you know what honestly this is the most uh, i've seen tire strategy come into play in so many different choices particularly from the dunlop side i've never seen this many different dunlops on the different bikes so it's uh it was a uh, 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 fun to watch so hey, thanks. I'll see you guys uh, hopefully again this year. Maybe hey, Iron Man. See you, final see you at Loretta's. You Come up it. in the booth, hang out with us. I will do Call so. Some so. Hey, all sure. right, turn back over to the professionals. All right, thanks, all right, thanks guys. Brock Thank Lover right there, representing Dunlop Tires, six time himself. Heading out of the booth as Johnny Gallagher joins Zach and I in the booth. Johnny, you've been out and about, man. I may have seen you over there chilling, watching racing. Uh, Shh, what, what do you see? It. What do you see? Uh, you know what? He, ah. That's why Johnny volunteers, so that he can go. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you guys had it covered, man. I could hear Brock. Okay, here we go. Second place. Look at that. Exactly one minute. It was 152.24 through that shot. Johnny Gerard has overtaken Jordan Ashburn for that number two spot. Those guys are in a battle right now. Will the pace that they're pushing be enough to be able to push them up to the back of Ben Kelly? One minute is the gap. Up 11 seconds from what it was at the finish line so it is extending rather than getting uh, a closer gap there but uh, again those guys working together could work with them work for them or work against them we'll see here when we have four laps complete in uh, just a matter of about another six miles but uh, yeah I was out there taking in a lot of the action just kind of checking in the way things were going like you guys were talking about tire selection uh, vision is huge everybody's having a hard time you know keeping goggles on don't 
normally see a lot of goggles. You've got eight, uh, dirt bike guys riding without goggles like you see on ATVs. And today, I can tell you, half of these guys up front even, when they're coming into the pits, there are no goggles. And you could tell they didn't just pitch them because there's mud around their eyes. They're actually wiping their eyes with towels before they put the new goggles on. We talked about that yesterday on the show. If you get that mud there, it dries on your face inside your goggles. Oh, Stu Baylor has made the pass and is now up to fourth, and he is on a charge. So that is uh, that would be two minutes and about 12 seconds back he is, but he's gotten back around Craig DeLong. We saw him. He was right on the rear wheel of DeLong in Howard's hole. He has made the pass and pushed Craig back to fifth, and Stu Baylor now back up to fourth after that rear wheel change and uh, tire change that pushed him back from second place all the way back to fifth. Uh, talk about that decision, Johnny. I, I, obviously, I think it's kind of playing itself out now, uh, as we see through three laps. R Ricky Russell on screen, that is your sixth place Ooh, rider coming through, but he has heavy pressure behind from the Grizzly. Grant Baylor, the 314 oh, machine on that Bobbitt's on online Monster Energy Kawasaki. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Mikey. You know, the, the whole gummy, non-gummy, um, you know, trials tire, yeah. the, the debate every year at Snowshoe. Um, you know, sure, we have some sand races earlier in the year where the guys are kind of like, well, do we run a paddle or do we run, you know, just the regular 81, which is kind of the go-to tire for guys in GNCC. But this race in particular is where the guys pull out all the crazy yep. stops, um, even different groove patterns and soaking the, the uh, tires themselves, trying to soften them up. It's uh, always a battle trying to get traction here and, we, like you said, playing itself out. Ben Kelly on screen. Folks, that is your leader. Mile marker number five, one minute to the second is exactly what his lead was just, uh, what would it have been, a mile ago that we saw him on screen there. And, uh, Jackson, I know you were down checking out some of those tire changes. You know, what was the... Uh, I guess kind of the sentiment amongst the guys after they left and saw how chewed up the tires were. Did they feel like it was a good decision? Was there any discussion? Did you ever hear any yeah, of that? There was three or four of them that were definitely, I think, questioned a little bit just because I don't think that they were expecting Stu not to be in the lead when he came around like that. But I did get a chance to look at Stu's tire, and it was very eat up. It was probably missing at least half the knobs, and the ones that were there were all chipped up and halfway gone. So it was probably crucial for him to get that tire. So there you go. Glass half full, glass half fit empty depends on how you want to look at it i guess johnny i think you're on the side of now hey let's run what we know works well i, I am for this particular track today and, and it's so hard because the conditions up here on the mountain change so quickly if it was raining i think if it was a little bit slicker than what it is not saying it's not slick it is not saying it's not muddy but there's just enough dry stuff that it's really chewing up those gummies and when you lose that there we go look at that uh now jordan nope it is still yeah no jordan, jordan. got back around johnny hard to tell there for a minute Andrew but Ryan. uh so that's a battle Looks like Johnny Gerard was able to make the pass. Jordan Ansper, An <laughs> Ashburn. Ashburn. I, got you. I was trying to say Ashburn answers, and it turned into a tongue <laughs> twister. Jordan Ashburn answered right back, took back the number two spot. And it uh, looked like those guys were still right at about that one-minute mark back from Ben Kelly, who is leading. Um, no, again, I, I think if the rain would have continued, the gummy probably would have paid off a little more. Um, but as you can see, starting to actually get some decent traction around parts of this track. And uh, the guys that are running the, the conventional 81 or, or whatever tire they normally run, and most of the GNCC rounds are going to have, obviously, more longevity out of it and be able to make it probably last the distance and not have to make that yeah. wheel change, which uh, took a lot of time. Bumped Stu back from second all the way to fifth. Yeah, yeah. the axle wouldn't want to come out. They were panicking down there for that for sure. That's one of the things that you can talk about. You know, in perfect conditions and, and under controlled circumstances, you can change a rear wheel. A lot of guys can do it in, you know, 35 to 45 seconds if they're you know really on their game uh you know but that's talking okay we have the brake pad there is Stu baylor uh still charging looking like he has now opened up a little bit of distance over the 342 of craig delong uh but he you can't control that in these racing conditions the brake pads wear down so little chamfers they build in to be able to get the rotor back in there they wear away so it's even you know harder to get the the brake pad spread to get the rotor in you, like you talked about a little bit of mud craig delong did uh just go by there so only losing a few seconds still in that fight over fourth and fifth with Stu baylor but it just all that grit you know the the bolt the axle nut itself has a tendency to get stuck in the socket because of the mud everything just becomes more complicated ricky russell the 212 and pro yamaha on screen i, I gotta say ricky's a i'm not bagging on ricky solid ride in six but a rider i really thought yeah. we would see up in the fight today and grant baylor jackson as you pointed out right behind him and and pushing the pace along not too far behind Stu and uh craig 
So we could definitely see those guys get up into a four-way battle over that fourth place spot. I'm with you, Johnny. I uh, thought I'd see more, a little more out of Ricky Russell today. Uh, I think his first XC1 win, correct me if I'm wrong, 2017, yep. was here at Snowshoe. So uh, I told the guys earlier, I said, if you want to circle two names, Jordan Ashburn, Ricky Russell. Those are your guys coming into today that always seem to do well here. But, hey, nonetheless, we got us a good one. Ben Kelly. Ooh, scary, scary, looking like a Ben Kelly of old. Can he hang on and grab that coveted snowshoe overall award? The snowboard is on the line. Kanadi Tires, a division of Greenball Corp, has been in the tire business for over 44 years. We're passionate about developing quality tires that perform great and bring extraordinary value to our customers. Whether you're looking for a tire that can handle your off-road adventures, need a reliable tire to take you from job site to job site, or simply want a tire with a beefier look that won't break the bank, then check out Kanadi Tires. The United States Motorcycle Coaching Association has been setting a standard for motorcycle coaching since 2016. Coaching is important for all riders, no matter the age or skill level. The USMCA connects riders with coaches, whether the rider is just starting out on their motorcycling journey to a competitive amateur racer looking to reach their next milestone or the professional athlete trying to clinch a title. Download the Motorcycle Coaching app and get connected to a USMCA certified coach today. How would you like to go to a school where we take into consideration how students learn best? Well, we do that. Because we find if we can build the curriculum around the things you are interested in, you're going to do a better job. The mission at On Track School is that educational success is possible while chasing your dreams. Not only will our staff help students to achieve success, they will cheer you on to the finish line. We encourage you to check out On Track School at ontrackschool.com, where we can help you chase your dreams and still get a quality education. ontrackschool.com, check it out. In the premier form of off-road motorcycle racing in the world, it's the beginning of a new era. 17 Supercross, 11 Motocross, and those three playoff rounds. Super Motocross World Championship Final. Tickets on sale now. Visit supermotocross.com. 32nd card is up. We've talked all about it. We've watched practice and qualifying. We've theorized. We've been trained. Now it is time to go. Race her up. Side by side we go. Jet Lord, Justin Cooper in front of the crowd. Get up in the mix. They have been one, two in the last seven photos of this championship. Here we go. Every race, every day, in every way. Print, social, digital, video, photo. Every race, every day. Every result, every story, every rider. Everything. Moto every day. With Racer X.
All right, we're out here at GNCC University, and we have Walker Fowler. He's back in gear. He's back on a quad. Walker, what do we got going out here today? Uh, it's Snowshoe University, uh, sponsored by Yamaha Blue Crew. So uh, basically, we just have anywhere from uh, huge CC utility quads down to the smallest little 50 CCs, age ranges from six or seven years old to uh, full, full grown men and women. So uh, just a, a huge collection of people from uh, all across the states. And uh, man, it's just awesome to do instruction with them on such a beautiful mountain. Now we've been hanging out watching you guys give instructions to the riders for people that want to take place in this next year. Uh, what, are they, what are you guys training? What exactly do you go through for these riders out here at the GNCC University? Yeah, so obviously we work on a lot of uh, riding techniques but, I mean, we start at the basics. Uh, we do some, honestly, how to do a donut. That way you can spin around trees or rocks um, and just get comfortable. Uh, some of the riders don't even know how to use a clutch when they get here, and they show up on a, a, a full manual machine, and by the end of it, they're very proficient in, in being able to use a clutch. So, like I said, we break them down into uh, four or five groups. Uh, we get as many instructors as we can, uh, top pro riders, uh, retired pro riders, mechanics, whoever we can get. And, um, yeah, we, like I said, we start at the basics, and by the end, they're, they're ripping laps on one of the hardest loops here at Snowshoe Mountain. What do you think about the future for GNCC ATV racing? Uh, it's bright, for sure. It's very bright. We had such a strong showing. Uh, they literally uh, sold the event out in like three days, and the waiting list maxed out in about three hours, and there were probably another 200 people that wished they could have signed up that were turned away. So, unfortunately, we can only have so many, but it's awesome to see that many people interested in the sport of ATV racing. Great things kicking off the Snowshoe Racing Weekend. As you can see there, we uh, we got the chainsaws out, we cut some trail. Uh, the weather did not cooperate, but we powered through, and uh, it was a great GNCC University here at Snowshoe. Uh, definitely was a great opportunity to work with these young riders, young and old, actually. Uh, it was, there you go, the return, <laughs> horns down. I don't know what that means. I'm not a sports fan, um, but I know it has something to do with basketball. Bro, in Texas, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, horns up, horns down. Uh, but yeah, these little guys, guys West and gals were there. loving it, uh, and it was a great two days up here at Snowshoe Mountain helping get some of these riders ready. Big thanks to Blue Crew and Yamaha and GNCC and Snowshoe Mountain for putting this all together. Uh, it was, uh, man, the weather conditions, like I said, it was a fight the entire time, but uh, these kids were just out there sending it and made for a great time. Mikey, I think next year we need to get you on a uh, Grizzly, get you out there. And <laughs> you had me at the Grizzly. We can get Jackson too. Jackson, come on. you got a dirt bike. You can yeah. come out. You're part of Blue Crew. Yeah, I'm ready to come. All right. Next year, you heard it here first, folks. Jackson Burrell coming to GNCC University. We'll turn you over to Jason Raines and Randy Hawkins and Ricky Russell and the crew, and uh, they'll take you out on some really gnarly stuff. Best in the world, huh? You know what, Johnny, to your credit, as we watch the Stasics here, on the podiums, I always had kids that were talking, singing the praises of the GNCC University by Yamaha, so you guys do a fantastic job. This, uh, well, this would have been Friday night, actually. Uh, the Stasic race taking place in the village and the little rippers. This might be our main attraction right here <laughs> oh, in the Stasic race. Without a doubt. Some of these kids look drunk on apple juice. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> There's a lot of weaving. Hey, it's, it's no good. Shoe, it's baby. good. Yeah, man. It's a party. You're here for it. Had a nice, solid track for them this weekend. They didn't have to deal with any of the mud or the just, dust. Just mom and dad and spectators trying to make eye contact with everybody as they go by to all their fans. They oh, that was a little squirrely. See, apple juice, that's what oh, I'm talking about. Oh, my goodness. I think they're getting around the concrete better than the pros. I saw a few people stumbling out of the village last night that weren't getting around this well, actually. <laughs> I didn't stick around that long. But, I didn't uh, either. Uh, this was definitely the highlight of the weekend, not only for these guys, but the many, many, many hundreds of spectators in attendance. You can see the entire track was lined, uh, and it's just uh, it's such a feel-good moment. You can see our GNCC mayor, Tim Cotter, out there passing out the uh, <laughs> passing out the medals, and some of the kids just want dad. But, yeah, uh, but he's like, I wasn't done racing. You can keep your yeah. medal. Let me go race. <laughs> Give me that bike back. I want to keep going. So cool. Shout out to Stasic. Making it happen for us, and oh, and the party last night. Nice. There, all right, Jackson. I know you were there. Come on, what was it like? It, you see it. That was it all night long, as far back as you can see. We had some of our track crew having to bounce out there. It was pretty fun. I heard about that. Heard about that. Had to get a little, you know, <laughs> physical with a couple of fellas. But we did good. Tim said we did good. We behaved. We got out of there good. So it was a good snowshoe. 
Sounds like Zach Heron. He's down in the Tealy Energy Pits. Going to get a word in with him. Take it away, Zach Heron. Hey, guys. Yeah, thanks. I'm down here at the Tealy Energy KTM tent. I want you guys to take a look at this tire. Look at the knobbies ripped off here. Uh, I, we've got a little bit of an explanation as far as why they decided to do a tire swap and how they're feeling about it. What do you guys have to say? We were trying to get a one pit stop race in. I think uh, it's going to play out the way we expected. Uh, BK is running really good right now, but I think BK pitted on two, uh, which we were hoping the rest of the guys would, and uh, I think it's going to play out in the end. Fantastic. Now, as far as the way this tire uh, deteriorated throughout the course of the race, is this kind of what you guys were expecting? Yeah, we were hoping to get uh, three laps out of it. I think we did. I don't think we could have went a fourth lap, but three for sure. Absolutely. So things going to plan here down here at Tealy KTM. They're feeling good about Stu Baylor coming to the front. All right, there you go. Got a little insight on uh, the decision by Tealy Energy's team. Feel like it'll play out. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see. The, uh, the results on the podium at the end will tell the tale. Right now, the guy out front on screen, we've had our drone following him for the last couple moments. Cool. If you were watching there, had a real oh my goodness moment coming across the road there. Full charge mode, hit that road, full swap sideways, was able to uh, pinch the bike with his knees, get it back under control, and get back on the throttle. That is the 530 Red Bull FMF KTM of Ben Kelly out front leading the way. At last check, one minute. That was clear back at the five mile marker though. Here we see there is Jordan Ash Burn likely our second place rider. He had gotten back around the 969 of Johnny Girard. Looks like they're washing out the radiator there. They've got some goggles. He took a drink bottle. They gave him some fuel, and they are sending him on his way, thinking it's going to be a little less than a minute because Jordan Ashburn was already up at the top yeah. of that climb. I think he has closed it down a pretty good little bit. And that is Ashburn coming in, it looks like. So this is going to be some time gained, possibly, for Jordan. A oh, sorry, that's actually Ben Kelly going the other way. But Ashburn looking like he's coming up out of that other camera shot. If we can get this drone to stay. So he leaves the pavement, pavement at 2 hours, 11 minutes, 1 second. If we can stay there, we will see if we can get exactly what the gap is back to second place. Uh, Jordan Ashburn. We're going to follow Ben Kelly. We've got some interesting sections coming up. You can see this course just traverses across this snowshoe facility. Million-dollar homes in the woods, condos up on the ridges, <laughs> ski slopes, and dirt bikes. You just can't beat it. Beautiful shots here. This place is absolutely epic, whether it be skiing, mountain biking, GNCC racing, hiking, all of the above. Jordan Ashburn now onto the pavement. Uh, still probably hovering around-ish that minute, maybe I would say a little less. Uh, so Ashburn putting in a push. You can see him taking a look back to see where his next nearest competitor is, which is this man right here, the 969. Johnny Girard also taking a look back. Uh, Everybody like wants to know. Copies. Yep. Well, in a, in a situation like that, you know, they say you should never look back, but it's not really looking eh, back if you only got to go 90 yeah. degrees if you've already made a turn. This is Ben Kelly out on the road making tracks, trying to get every – second that he can out of this to maintain that gap with what will be a white flag waving when Ricky Towery is standing on the side of the trail here in just about another three quarters of a mile. What a gnarly section. Uh, Johnny, I'm going to say it. This is the ride we've been expecting to see out of Ben Kelly for a while. Yeah, I mean, Ben, uh, you know, Nursing early in injury. Yeah, early in the season, it was like he had some hero stuff. We knew yeah. he was riding on a broken leg. Uh, somehow he was still pulling off wins. He was pulling off, you know, very near second places. He was right there and then kind of fell into this lull. Uh, obviously had a, a major bike issue with the DNF where he was running. He had just put a push in at the Penton there. He was pushing himself up into, I believe he had just gotten into a podium position and appeared to be running down the leaders and then slowly went backwards throughout the day, uh, ultimately ending up in a DNF. Uh, we do know a bike issue of some kind, and that almost seemed to take the wind out of his sails a little bit. Uh, at our last round, he ended up uh, seventh there with a late race push to get around yeah. Stu Baylor, uh, but nonetheless seemed to kind of struggle all day long in the dust after a bad start. And, you know, a lot of people, I think, starting to question, is is he not the championship guy that, you know, we had uh, expected him to be after winning six straight uh, mm -hmm. at the start of 2022 and, and also our 2021 champion? But today he looks like he's on it, and, you know, it's almost remiss to say that Ben is a good technical rider because all of these guys are but you know I think Ben just has that style we talk about his his bike skills and his style the way his feet <laughs> we talk about how his feet are always on the pegs as he paddles <laughs> through that rut curse. but everybody always has to paddle yeah. through that rut um, oh, yeah. you know he's just very fluid he doesn't waste much energy on the bike he leads with his head he pinches the bike with his knees and uh, it works at a place like this there's Stu Baylor now still on the other side of the mountain back there in that fourth place spot but that's a big gap from Johnny Girard. 
they're they're talking about that decision paying off. Uh, unless Stu Baylor can run about a three minute faster last lap, I don't think that's gonna pay off. Not I think I think that good. was yeah, you, you you roll the dice sometimes yeah. and, and we've talked about it. There have been times we're running that tire, uh, whatever that tire option is, super soft, gummy, special compound, treated, grooved, whatever it may be to get more grip, uh, that you know won't last, will pay off and it's looking like today they may have uh, they may have rolled the dice and, and come up snake eyes. It's a bugaboo. Happens. Not only did they change the tire, though, when he, they changed the tire, that gave him time to wash the bike off. He washed the grips off. He got new gloves, new goggles. So he, he was able to rebound a lot as far as his fit goes, his vision, his traction with his hands, his traction with the tire. So I'm not going to put it past him yet, guys. Uh, yeah, that, you got a point there, <laughs> Jackson, because every time we... Well, that, that say, was Johnny Girard. Did he get back around Ashburn, or did we miss Ashburn? If we got, we're on XC2 there, we need to click back over to... Overall, it's Ben Kelly, Jonathan yeah, Gerard, so Johnny and Gerard got Ashburn. back around Jordan Ashburn. So look at that, another shakeup. Just when we think Jordan Ashburn has laid claim to that, but the uh, the real tale of the tape there is if you look at the elapsed time, two hours thirteen minutes forty, two hours fourteen minutes thirty five. So fifty five seconds is the uh, is the gap back to Johnny Gerard from Ben Kelly. So the duo of the FMF Red Bull KTMs out front uh, and then they're in that third place is Jordan Ashburn on that Magna One Motorsports Husqvarna and he is uh, just five seconds back of Johnny Gerard. So essentially one minute separating your top three. We'll wait and see what the gap is back to Stu Baylor. Uh, you can never say never uh, but keep in mind guys, you know, the, the goggle change, the wash grips, all that, uh, he had all that last lap, everything was fresh, had the fresh tire, and it looks like he lost another minute. If yeah. if our producer, Adam Gordon's estimation on time is correct, we'll see what it is when he actually comes in here. Because last lap, it was two minutes and ish seconds. Uh, hey, guys, I'm going to jump in real quick. Sorry to interrupt. I'm down here in the pits. Ricky Russell is off the bike. Uh, apparently, the foot peg has snapped off. They've got the Ampro Yamaha up on the stand, and they've been working on this thing for close to a minute now, maybe even a little longer. Ricky completely off, now taking the helmet off. He might be out of this thing. Oh, oh man. Tough. I was just Ricky Russell. I was just about to mention Ricky. He something's really took the wind out of his sails. That might have been it because on the first lap he went from third to first in just one second, and he was really off to a good start. So I'm surprised to see him trickle back down like that. Yeah, I, I hate it for Ricky. I mean, this was a race. Uh, you know, you talked about it, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mikey. This was a race. I had him really kind of pegged as a guy that uh, we would very likely see up front. Here comes Stu Baylor up the hill. So this is going to tell us exactly what the gap is when he checks in here in just a moment. You can see full charge knowing he really needs to yep. get to work if he wants to have a shot at a podium here today. Top three already checked in. Stu Baylor checks in. A lap time of 2.16.50. So three minutes and 10 seconds behind your leader. So he lost over a minute on that lap uh, after having changed the tire, as you pointed out, Jackson, uh, you know, rinsed out, rinsed off the grips, uh, put on. Those are hard to come by right there. Nope. <laughs> put on the new gloves and uh, everything. Little technical difficulty there for a moment. Uh, and unfortunately still lost another minute that lap. So, you know, it, so many variables out there. There is Grant Baylor now. He's made some passes. Looks like he may have gotten around. Let's check and make sure. Uh, so, yeah, Grant Baylor did get around. Uh, let's see, last lap he was behind Craig DeLong. Uh, looks like we got some more guys checking in now. Baylor's going to be about 30 seconds behind Stewart Baylor, so yep. Grant so just he, behind him. He made the pass on Craig. Uh, he made the pass on Ricky, which we know he's in there getting that foot peg change. So picked up two spots from back in that seventh place spot. Oh, look at that. Now Josh Toth checks in, and with corrected oh, wow. time, moves all the way up to that number five spot on the uh, – on the overall with corrected time. So he actually leapfrogs over top of DeLong and Baylor up into fifth. So his tire change must have helped him a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. A great lap for him. And if you start looking at lap times there, uh, 33.45. Almost identical lap times for your leader, Ben Kelly, and teammate, Johnny Girard. 33.45.56 for Ben Kelly. 33.45.03 for Johnny Girard. So half a second faster for Girard. Jordan Ashburn with the 33.55, so 10 seconds off. Then going back down through there, everybody else in the 34s, except for Josh to Oh, Josh Toth also, also still uh, a 30. 423, so a low 34. Most of the other guys up in the high 34s or even low 35s. If we refresh that there, it looks like we do have our XC2 leader checked in. Liam Draper checks in. Uh, give us an update there, Jackson. 
All right, Liam checking in. Liam is going to be the leader, of course, in the XC2. He's in eighth overall. So we do know he had a little bit of pressure from behind in uh, that, okay, now down to Howard's hole, mile marker number one. That is your leader. The number 530 of Ben Kelly leading the way. It was 55 seconds when they checked in up at the finish line. One mile later now, there's a, a little bit of pressure from behind. Uh, Johnny Gerard making up five seconds. Nothing to panic yet about, Mikey, but if you, can, yeah. if you do that every mile, you know, he's got enough track <laughs> left that point. he could do it. So we'll see what it is here. Uh, I didn't get the actual second. Don't know if... Uh, uh, Adam Gordon, our producer, could give us the uh, the run back on the clock and let us know when exactly it was that uh, Ben Kelly came into the hole here and we can get a gap. But it was 55 seconds exactly at the finish line. We'll see see when it comes through. Uh, so we'll see if we can get a gap as Ben Kelly has been through. We are waiting on Johnny Girard, second place rider. And then, uh, again, back in that third place spot, it is Jordan Ashburn. Uh, just behind him, a little ways back, Stu Baylor in the number four spot. Josh Toth up to fifth. Grant Baylor in sixth. And uh, Craig DeLong in the number seven spot. We are still waiting on... And Johnny Brock just gave me a little update on the tires there. Kelly and Gerard are running the same one, the EN91, but they're running the harder base one where Toth is running the same tire as well. He's running the gummy version. It, it's an FIM approved tire. Is Ooh, it guys, we got a shake up. New second place rider. Jordan Matt Ashburn just made the pass on Johnny Gerard, but Johnny Gerard took that left line. Looked like he may have made the pass back exiting yeah. Howard's hole. That was the move right there for second place. We, we wondered how it happened in that camera shot where in the pits, you know, Jordan Ashburn had clear control over second place. Suddenly Johnny Gerard back out front. Maybe there's more Howard's holes out there <laughs> because be. Johnny Gerard pops in here in, in third behind, but then leaves again maybe in second. So these guys are just just trade and paint the whole way around this snowshoe mountain. Uh, pretty gnarly how it's been. It's been kind of calm throughout this entire race. We haven't had those real tight battles, although Grant Baylor and uh, who was he battling with? Ashburn earlier. Pretty gnarly. But this one, hey, white flag comes out. Time to go to work, boys. And, and we talked about it a lap ago. You know, with those two pushing each other, yes, it is 55 seconds up to Ben Kelly. But if these guys are in full push pace, you know, Ben, I'm sure getting pit boards is aware yeah. of what the gap is. But, I mean, one little miscue, you know, getting caught in a bad line, maybe behind a lap or loses a couple seconds suddenly these guys start seeing they're only 20 30 seconds behind yeah. him or they just get lost in their own battle and really pushing the pace suddenly they look up and they see the big number 530 in uh in front of them there and it's a battle for the lead yeah let's go we're here for it might be wild as they stand on the track right now, if it were to end right now, DeLong would still be your points leader 184 Stu Baylor second Kelly third Ashburn fourth but uh, the boy that's nothing. 174 to 178 yeah. and 184. A lot can change in those last three rounds well, of the season. And we talked about it coming into this race. You know, it was 24 points coming into today between uh, your leader, Craig DeLong, and Ben Kelly there in third with Stu Baylor sitting eight points back. Mm -hmm. uh, so a 16-point gap from Stu back to Ben. I mean, what a day it would be for Ben Kelly to take a 24-point gap down to 10 mm -hmm. uh, and only be, I believe, it's two points or four points behind uh, Stu Baylor. So that suddenly, you know, when you're you're talking about three guys separated by 10 points you just throw a blanket over them and yeah. say hey let's uh let's mix this thing up and see how it goes <laughs> go. speaking of Stu baylor on screen the 514 machine here through howard's hole looking good carrying great speed and up through that line they're using in the middle there looking good has been able to distance himself uh over craig delong and now we know also his brother grant baylor has made the pass on craig delong as well and taken away that uh fifth spot uh, physically, but then we'll have to keep an eye open for the 206 of Josh Toth, who does have Grant Baylor covered on corrected time. We'll see just how close he is to him physically when we get him here at this shot in just a moment. Oh, going to be good. Going to be a good finale here for the Snowshoe GNCC. There's Grant. Grant Baylor rolling through Howard's hole. Looked like right about that 30-ish seconds that he yeah. was behind Stu up top there. Sudden... There, there's Josh Toth right there. Toth is behind him. Where is DeLong? He was a little ways back at the at the finish line. There's a Husqvarna mechanic there, yep, running now. DeLong. And here, right bottom it. Yep, there yep. you go. It's actually Eli Kiger, uh, former ATV racer. Mm -hmm. uh, 
he uh, raced College A and came up as a schoolboy rider. Was a big part of that Coastal team for many, many years and still is. Still getting involved there. Craig, Craig is basically like an adopted brother. To, That's true. To, to Eli yeah. or vice versa. They've worked together for so long. They're family at this point. Oh, is that Craig there? The way they're working to get him towels. He may have gone down there. We'll see if we can get that. He's certainly hiding behind the tree. That, that is Craig DeLong yep. as he rides away. So Craig DeLong going down in Howard's hole, uh, or maybe just stopped there to get those towels. Uh, hard to tell exactly, but a lot of people swarmed around him. So if we look there, it appeared that uh, Josh Toth still did have uh, Grant Baylor covered, but not quite close enough yet to, if we look at the elapsed time, how close is Josh Toth to Stu Baylor there, Jackson? Let's take a look. He's about seven seconds behind Stu Baylor. Okay, on the correct, well, that would well, be as they came in yes. physically. So 216.50 to 17.15, so 25 seconds is what Josh Toth would need to make up to drop Stu from fourth back to fifth and, and move himself up a little bit closer to the Podium, and if you go up to Jordan Ashburn, it'd be 2:14:42, 17:15. It'd be two minutes and uh, 35 seconds. So a pretty big gap up there to get to uh, a podium position. But hey, there's a lot of racing left. You can't count anybody out. That's for sure. Boy, Mike, I'm glad we got our calculator with us today. <laughs> I'm you, Johnny, I was over here like, I, I lost. Uh, come on, track, guys, it's man. just math. Uh, I'm just saying it sounded like some common core math. No, me. man, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> they're using I, I, I learned math that you do in your head, not yeah. where you got to write it out on a piece of paper that's as long as this TV trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. We didn't. <laughs> now, Johnny, how we wait. What did, what is your perspective on Josh Toth running the two-stroke today and the gummy tire as well on the two-stroke? And oh, when I saw him come man. around, it really looked like he had low pressure in it. So there was a... There was a question um, uh, given basically about the gummy tires. And, and honestly, uh, so when we saw the Baylor brothers really have great success, Ben Kelly on screen here at the four-mile marker, sense of urgency, 10 out of 10. Yep. Ben Kelly not waiting around. He is getting out of here in a hurry. Bang, he is off. That's right. Uh, he wants to stretch this one out. He wants to get the win. He does not want to leave any doubt. Doesn't want to be coming into a bottleneck in the last couple of miles and thinking, man, I can't afford to give up 10, 15 seconds. So he is making tracks while he can. Uh, but when the Baylor brothers and a few others had much success with those gummy tires, they were on a 252 stroke. The amount of torque produced by a 454 stroke just really maxes out the um, the durability of those knobs on the tires and the tire itself. So the, the, to be able to run that gummy tire on a four stroke, especially a 450, even a 250F, honestly, has always kind of been the question. And it's like, if you're going to do it, you have to plan to be able to be fast enough to make up the difference of a tire change. So to answer your question, Josh Toth on a gummy? Yeah, I'm behind it 100%. He's on, I assume I didn't ask, but he's probably on a 300 two-stroke. Uh, that seems to be the machine of choice for a lot of the hard enduro guys. And I know that uh, Josh has done some hard enduro already this year as well. What do you think the disadvantages and advantages of riding a two-stroke in GNCC is? So uh, at its core, I think on a track like this, it's probably a bit of a wash. Um, but if you look at hard enduro, which a lot of this course resembles yep. hard enduro, uh, it's, it's a lot of things. Uh, I'm not the expert on this. I've never ridden hard enduro, but, you know, I watch a lot of it at home, so I guess that makes me the expert for now. Yep. Uh, oh, here we see second place on screen. It is Jordan Ashburn. He's been able to hold off Johnny Girard. Johnny Girard did not make the pass back there in Howard's hole, and it looks like now Jordan has opened up a bit of a gap over that guy right there, question mark. Yes, it is. That <laughs> is Johnny Girard, the 969 Red Bull FMF KTM there in the number three spot. So that is your podium positions checked through here at the four-mile marker, the Met Method, race wheels method alley. Uh, the the grip of a two-stroke, they say you can just kind of control it and lug it better, which uh, I guess, you know, just the, the torque of a four-stroke, even though you have a lot of throttle control, it just doesn't seem to have the bite that the, the two-stroke does, at least that's what the hardened Arrow guys claim. And another big thing is the weight. Uh, you know, they're always seeming to be kind of hopping those bikes around, almost like trials bikes. And uh, there is a significant difference in weight between the two-stroke power plant and the four-stroke power plant. So that's just many, one of the many reasons I think they prefer that two-stroke machine. Yeah, yeah, when we saw him go through Howard's hole there, it seemed like he was really making it through good, and I was expecting that the two-stroke is going to give him a little bit, especially with the gummy tire and those rocks when they get down to that slippery stuff. N nimbleness with the two-stroke is a big thing. I mean, they can just, yeah, again, hop the bike around, bounce it around. Um, but as for why more people don't run a two-stroke in GNCC, it's... Uh, as a whole, when you're trying to go at, at high rates of speed on a two-stroke, it takes more rider input. Um, the four-stroke allows you to kind of ride smoother and 
quote unquote lazier, which allows you to, you know, be more efficient during the course of a three hour race. You're not using as much energy trying to go at that speed. Yes, we've seen riders have success, but you know, if you think back, when's the last time we saw a rider on a two stroke machine win an overall, we'd have to go to our books, but you know, it goes way back. We've seen it for sure. Um, even in the modern era of the four strokes, but it's maybe? been Caleb got Caleb. One. Well, yeah, he did it on a yeah. 125 yeah. or a okay. 150. Um, yeah, that was that. I, I wouldn't say for certain that that was the last two-stroke overall, but I would. I wouldn't say that I'd it wasn't. I guess I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a very likely case that it could have been because we've never had an XC2 overall yeah. from on the on the bike side of things. We've only ever had it on ATVs. So yeah, it is very possible that and prior to that obviously it was commonplace, but that's when all there was was two strokes. Right. Uh, once, you know, much like in motocross, Stu Baylor on screen, that is your fourth place rider. Uh, we'll see what the Two okay. minutes off the podium, we are being told now, for Stu Baylor. Yeah, so two minutes off of even being able to be on the podium there. So, uh, you know, some days all you can do is just take your shot. You know, they took their shot. And, and maybe there was even other factors at bay. You know, Stu could have had these guys down to under a minute halfway through, you know, lap number four, gotten in a bad place with a bottleneck and, and lost some additional time. There's no way to know for sure. There is Grant Baylor right there. And I feel like that gap may be actually closing down a little bit. I think he might be making up some time on Big Brother Stu. So will we see a Baylor battle over that fourth place spot here in the final miles of this Snowshoe GNCC? I'll be fine with it. We haven't had it all year, I don't think, if I'm not mistaken. What do you call it, Baylor on Baylor action? <laughs> that's, that's fine. Johnny said that. Johnny Gallagher said I, that. I huh? thought that was your quote. <laughs> it might be me. I, I, I may have said that one. Whoa, I, I wasn't trying to. Where credit's do. I don't know. It's all a blur at this point, Johnny. Hey, man, you know, you got to think uh, seriously, though. How many times do you think For over sure. the course of the years those guys have gone on? It, wildly enough, I don't know that they ride together all that much anymore. Yeah. But over the years coming up through, you know, I, I, I was with them when they practiced together. You know, they would stuff each other. They would, you know, take each other out. They were scrubbing on the moto tracks and trying to, you know, blow each other off the track. That's just how they ride. They're brothers. You never want to get beat by your brother. And they're close enough in age. There we see Johnny Girard. Uh, so it looks like presumably our first place rider Ben Kelly and second place Jordan Ashburn already through here at the five mile marker we pick it up with third place Johnny Girard as he comes through but we haven't really seen much of them not even just this year Mikey historically like we haven't yeah. really seen them battle it seems like each GNCC event one of them is kind of clearly on their game more so than the other uh, I don't know and I could be wrong I think there has been a case where they were both on the podium but it was like a first and third type situation uh, so we've never really seen them kind of battle down to the wire and maybe today will be the day I'd love to see it. Let's and do it. To your point there, Johnny, uh, Stu even said one when Grant won, he was like, Grant had more than me. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold him up. He was coming through at a high rate of speed. So yeah, they never uh, seemed to hold each other up. We haven't seen that battle at the top either. All right. Well, we're here, we're here and waiting at the five mile marker. Top three are through. Next riders through should be uh, Stu Baylor here in the fourth place spot, and then Grant Baylor in fifth. Uh, just behind them would be Craig DeLong uh, in that sixth place spot in the XC1. Start mixing it up from there with Liam Draper. Uh, if we actually do need to update that XC2 and see what it was with now four laps complete, uh, I don't know if we ran down the top at least three in that class and how the podium battles are shaping up. Up. Uh, but if we look there, it is. Rui checked in about a minute behind, I do believe. There you go. Yeah, he was. Yep, uh, eight seconds. Yep, minute. And then about 18 seconds back to Jonathan Johnson. Yeah, minute 18 from first to uh, second. And yeah, Jonathan Johnson there in third. So the, both Rui and Angus, or, and Jonathan Johnson got around uh, Angus Riordan, who was up into that second place spot. So it's been an up and down day for Angus, but uh, looking like he's still not completely out of that. Only about another eight seconds behind uh, there. And then Grant Davis there in the fifth place spot. Cody Barnes in sixth. And Mike Wachowski checking in seventh there with four laps complete. Oh, here we see Stu Baylor on screen. There he is. We'll see what the gap is. 233.05 coming through at the five mile marker. How far back is baby bro? Mm, come on, Grizzly. You're on the mountain. Got black bears out here, but still. Come hey, bear, bears are bears. Bears are bears. <laughs> so 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And yeah, we're still up around that 30 seconds. Doesn't look like he's been able to make much up, if any. Now it looks like it's stretched back out a little bit. 
a lot of things between here and there. You know, having raced this course a number of times, you have a tendency when you watch on TV to just kind of think they, they basically teleport from one section <laughs> to the next, but that is not the case. Uh, there is, look at that, Josh Toth now has gotten physically around Grant Baylor uh, and up into that fifth place spot. And that begs the question, that was about 30, well, there. Uh, yeah, there Grant? is Grant there. Grant. That was probably like, give or take, 40-ish seconds between those two physically. Do we know what row uh, Josh Toth started on? I do believe the third. The third. Okay. Well, no, because uh, he's not in the top 20. Then. Four then. Four. Yeah. First, first four would have been top 20, so he would have been row five. I think he's five. Meaning it would have been 50 seconds. So he may Correct. be right there with Stu Baylor yeah. for that fourth place Ooh, spot now. Oh, things heating up. Sounds like we're going to take a commercial break, get a word in from our sponsors. And when we come back, we'll reach the conclusion. How's it going to wrap up? Ben Kelly out in front, Johnny Gerrard in the two spot. We'll be right back after this. Yamaha YZ450F. Narrower, more compact, and lighter. Built to do one thing, go faster. Flexible financing options offered directly through Yamaha are available. See your local Yamaha dealer today. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gaskets seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets sealing championships since 1989. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. Last season was my best season ever by far. I won a lot of races, I won a championship, and it was my, also my first year using Arma. And one of the things I noticed was just my ability to string good days together. You know, like especially in the summertime in Florida where you're riding every day and the heat index is 108 degrees and you're doing 230s and going to the gym and bicycle and, and all that stuff. I think in the past I've been super inconsistent day to day. Yeah, I may have a, you know, a good race here or you know, a good day during the week there, but overall I think where I improved the most was my consistency in my recovery.
GNCC Racing is brought to you by Specialized. Specialized Turbo E-Bikes. It's you, only faster. And Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. And welcome back to GNCC Live here on RacerTV.com. Almost heaven, West Virginia. What a sight that is. I wish we could have seen this site this weekend while we were here. Uh, it looks like that right now. Finally, I wish I could have seen that site anytime I've been here since Monday. <laughs> yeah, the weather's been pretty gnarly. There's no doubt about that. But boy, what? I mean, it's gorgeous. It is. It's beautiful. Is gorgeous. Here. Hey, on Friday night, oh, Ricky Towery, he's got more fans than Stu Baylor. He's got more fans than Adam McGill. Certainly has more fans. Me, Johnny, Jackson, and Zach all combined. Um, it was gorgeous on Friday, <laughs> right up until it wasn't. Oh, I'm not kidding you. It was beautiful Friday. You're right, Johnny. When we flew or uh, through the uh, green flag, it began raining, and I think it stopped raining at the checkers, like yep. right in that yep. window of the race. We've seen that happen several times this weekend. Yeah, yeah, not fun. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, these guys had fun. EMTB Racing, hey, something for everybody. There's a pro class. There is a women's pro class. There's amateurs. There's youth. My personal favorite, the big boar. That one's got my name written all over it. Cypress there's, Corey. He is our winner in the EMTB class this last week. And he's ridiculous. followed. Wait, I thought Charlie Mullins Mullen. won. No. Oh, okay. I, uh, sorry, I thought you meant this. Or I got I got confused. Yeah, I think uh, Charlie Mullins topping this one. There we see Talon Hawk. He topped the XC2 class. Again, look at the mud just dripping out of the beard. Jenny McFall, Jenny McFall. that WXC uh, class winner there. But everybody, that's actually Mike Ulrich there from Yamaha. Took a borrowed bike, and these guys were full battle mode. That's Ty Teasdale there from the XC2 class. Uh, man, Mitch Hawkins. Absolutely just a gnarly one. Seeing these guys come in after the race, Jackson, they were exhausted, exhausted. but more than anything, you could only see the whites of their eyes. Yep. Great camera yeah. shots here, really showing just how dense these woods are. And, and keep in mind, we're racing EMTBs here, but this is the only current U.S. stop for the UCI Mountain Bike World yep. Championship. There is uh, Cypress Gorey right there, taking the win. Charlie Mullins, he got second. I was up on the podium. <laughs> I, but, I, I thought I saw a post that said Charlie Mullins No, Char won. Charlie got second. I remember talking to him. Charlie also said he's wanting to run some World Cup, I believe, was in, yep. that will also be coming here. So he's got oh. some things up his sleep. It's good to see Charlie back, though. Either way, he's only been able to do two rounds this year. No? There he is at the top. Charlie Mullins, I guess, did. I don't know. Yeah, at this Char point. I think there was a time correction was the issue. Oh, that's Charlie exactly Mullins, what it yeah. was. So Me and Cy Zach Cy 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 Curry, he crossed the finish line first. But yep. Charlie Mullins won the race on time correction and, because he uh, hasn't been racing yes, this year. That's exactly so what he it started is. a further row back. He was able to get close enough <laughs> to Cypress Corey on time correction. That's the second and, time uh, we've done that this week. Hey, guys, hey. this is your first time yeah, at Snowshoe. Right. Don't Be sweat it. The whole time correction thing is very complicated. Speaking of time correction that we've talked about all weekend. Toth is in a great spot with that time yes. correction. As we were talking before the break, starting about five or six rows back. So he's going to have quite a bit of time under his belt that he can pull out. We're waiting on the leaders here. Yamaha Live Drone at the power line. This is just before the 10 mile marker and a long climb up to the top of the mountain where their pro pit mechanics will be waiting. Waiting in that GBC tires pit stop area. Don't expect to see any pit stops because from there it's really less than a mile to the finish line. Will it be the 530 Red Bull FMF KTM of Ben Kelly we see emerge first? Will Jordan Ashburn or his team or Ben's teammate, Johnny Girard, be able to... Oh, here we go. We've got a rider that looks like he's moving at a pretty good rate of speed. Hard to tell who it is. Either way, they're getting with it. That, the riding style tells me it's Ben Kelly, but I can't tell clear enough just yet. Man, the way he's riding, that sure looks to be... It is, question mark, Ben Kelly it is. That is the 530 of Ben Kelly leading the way out front now just less than a mile to what will be a checkered flag waving in the hands of Ricky Towery. And Ben Kelly will take a big chunk out of the championship points lead here today if he's able to finish this one out with just literally about three quarters of a mile remaining and pretty much just paved roads and gravel from here to the finish. I gotta tell you, Johnny, I was with you on that one. I was waiting for, I wanted Ben Kelly to stand up <laughs> with that signature over the handlebars look. But yeah, uh, boy, I, nonetheless, Ben Kelly just been stellar today, Johnny. Yeah, he's been on a mission, honestly, really just the last two laps. There were right. a lot of questions midway through the race, like we were expecting more out of Ben. Is he gonna push? Is this gonna happen? And then suddenly it was like, he just 
tapped into that, uh, again, we've talked about it, that flawless riding style. If you wrote a book about how to ride a dirt bike, there would be a lot of pictures of Ben Kelly in there and video of him doing uh, what it is that he's doing right now, which is just flawless execution of how to ride a dirt bike properly. And a wheelie, you Let's do go. not normally see Let's a lot go. of excitement or celebration out of Ben Kelly. This one isn't over, folks. He's still got about three quarters of a mile, maybe give or take to the finish line from here. But uh, you can tell this is an emotion, emotional filled yep. mile for Ben Kelly. It's been a trial of a season, realistically a, a trial of a a trial of about a season and a half. I mean, yeah. if you go back to last year winning the first six rounds, having that horrific leg injury that had him sit out the rest of 2022, re-breaking it coming into 2023, just weeks before the season opener, coming out on a broken leg, second place at round one, coming out winning round two on a broken leg. Here comes Jordan Ashburn up the climb at the 10 mile marker uh we are being told that possibly we may have seen johnny gerrard up here already did not get a clip of that uh, that was actually ben kelly going the other way down so now he knows exactly what the gap is that he has back to jordan ashburn whether or not uh that looks to me to be johnny gerrard coming up right there so there is Johnny, that is your third place rider. So that is your podium as they run. About two minutes back is the battle for fourth uh, between Stu Baylor and Josh Toth. Not a physical battle, but a battle on corrected time and also a battle for points because just behind them, a few more positions back is Craig DeLong, your points leader. But this guy right here out on the nice dry pavement of Snowshoe, just clicking away quarter mile after quarter mile, getting ever so closer to a checkered flag waving the 530 of Ben Kelly is doing what he needs to do to take a massive chunk out of that points deficit that he had coming in today. 24 points, and if things end the way they are now, he is going to knock that down to less than 10. Uh, manageable. He's knocked it down to manageable. Realistic. Hey, one race, he could turn this thing around and have that reverse plate after summer break. But uh, I got to, uh, to your point, Johnny, I know we're talking about Ben Kelly getting a win. We saw the wheelie through uh, the pro pits. He's feeling good. He's feeling himself. You might be sitting at home thinking, well, yeah, he's got to win this year. He's in the championship hunt. This would be his first time on the box since round five. Yep. And, and this every is round time, nine. And this is round nine. And every time I speak with Ben Kelly, hey, man, how you feeling? You can kind of see kind of purses his lips and he's frustrated because he doesn't feel like he's riding like Stu himself. Baylor on screen. There is your fourth place rider. Baylor's oh, you can see the, the challenges. The left rider's making it difficult. Oh, he's boy. trying to pick a line, but he gets shut down by the left rider having to shoot around him on the outside. Uh, but no, for sure, Mikey, you hit the nail on the head there. You know, there just seems to be this sense of, uh, you know, frustration quite frankly, and I, I, I'm not going to speak for him, but sure. what I perceive as embarrassment. You know, yeah. ben, ben seems like he just kind of didn't really have the answer for the way things were going, felt like he was a little bit lost, felt like he was putting in the work, just wasn't getting the results. And uh, whatever he's done in the few weeks from three weeks from yeah. Mason Dixon till now is paying off huge because in the last two laps, he has just put down a pace that no one else can match. The gap just continues to widen and he's ridden away with what appears to be all but an assured win here today. And now it's not all but assured, it is assured. Bang, there it is. 5.30, Ben Kelly grabbing the win. His first win since round two in the sands of Florida. So, hey, Johnny, arguably, how about it? Arguably, two of the toughest rounds of the season. Uh, Florida at the Wild Boar and Snowshoe. And Ben Kelly, 530, has those wins under his belt. Well, I think it's not even necessarily arguably. I think mentally these are, whether it's yeah. physically or not, mentally those are the two toughest rounds. Florida, because of the phys physical exhaustion that you feel, and here because of the constant drain on your decision-making, you know, no matter how well your race goes at Snowshoe, you're going to face some serious adversity. You're going to be in bottlenecks. You're going to have lap riders on the trail in front of you. You're going to be traversing these gnarly, gnarly obstacles, and you're going to just have to keep grinding and I think the mental toughness of Ben Kelly really showed through today and you could see him talking, talking about almost looking like the, the bike <laughs> yeah. looped out from underneath him and uh, talking to the team manager there as you pointed out uh, and looking like we may potentially have our oh no I thought that was Jordan Ashburn but it was not so Jordan Ashburn on that Magna One Motorsports Husqvarna looking like unless Johnny Gerard can put in a really good push here in the final mile of track uh, he will hang out of that second place spot but the man of the day the man of the hour this guy right 
right here at the 5.30. Ben Kelly, you can see the exhaustion in his eyes, but uh, oh, the sense of relief, Mikey. Look at that. You saw the shoulders. You saw the head back. And now you see the joy. He's uh, he's telling stories, and he's probably hearing about everybody else's stories as well from, from the team manager there. Yeah, just uh, stoked for Ben. Um, yeah, like I said, you know, you got the two wins this season. And, Johnny, we talk about momentum always as we go into summer break. You want to be the guy with the points lead. You certainly want to be the guy to grab a win. And Jordan Ashburn, Ashburn there in that second place spot. Another solid performance on top of Snowshoe Mountain for him. Uh, he was able to grab the win here last year and uh, really set himself on the path for what ultimately became the 2022 GNCC Championship. You can see he rides up next to Ben there. And I'll tell you one thing. I'm sure Jordan would have liked to win here today, but I bet you he's also pretty happy with the second place finish just to be done with the mountain. I'm sure he'll go back and play it back and say, I could have done this or I could have done that. But, man, anytime you're on the podium on the mountain, that's a uh, that's a phenomenal achievement here. This is a tough race course and a uh, very challenging mountain. There is Johnny Girard, the 969. Those two were absolutely locked in a battle the last two laps. They threw everything at each other with Jordan Ashburn coming out on top. But uh, as we at least saw a few miles ago, a massive gap back from Johnny Girard. Doesn't look like there'll be any likelihood that he will be knocked off the podium by anyone else. This will be your overall podium, and you can see the exhaustion from Johnny Girard right there. Boy, what? You, know, you know one thing's for sure. With Johnny Girard, he's, you're going to get a hundred and probably 150%. Let's be real. He's certainly going to leave it all out on the track. Mikey, I'm sure we're going to have uh, Zach and, jo and uh, Jackson down there getting us some interviews from our top three. But we are also going to keep a very close eye on these battles coming in as there are huge points implication. But it uh, looks like Jackson is ready with today's winner, Ben Kelly. And uh, take it away, Jackson. Yes. Here we go. Winner, ben Kelly. Ben, take me through the day. Today, take me through snowshoe. Yeah, it was, uh, it was good, obviously. Uh, started on the front row, and yeah, it was kind of right there in, uh, right there in the mix. I had a crash in Howard's Hole, and the guys on the second row caught us all. It's kind of typical, because uh, the guys on the first row are kind of a little hesitant, but uh, yeah, they caught us, passed us, and uh, yeah, I kind of struggled the first two laps, just... I softened up my bike to try to get more of a plush feel and kind of missed the mark and it was super soft in the front so it was sketchy all over the place so I stopped, had the guy stiffen up the fork and then uh, from there I was just better, you know, I could ride, could ride smooth and I was able to pick through the pack pretty good and got a comfortable lead and uh, yeah, just held it there, uh, went fast in the fields, the cart roads and then uh, kept it steady through the rocks and yeah, that was proper. What's the plan going into the summer break, Ben? Win this race, and I did that, so that's good. I mean, it's been a long time since I've won. Uh, I was getting nervous. I didn't know how to do it, but, yeah, happy to get it done and going to summer break with a win and, yeah, just have some fun this summer. It's been, uh, it's been a grind so far this year, and, yeah, it's been tough. I've been struggling a lot. Uh, so, yeah, just looking forward to uh, going home, hanging out with some friends, having fun, riding, and, uh, yeah, coming out swinging for the second half of the season. All right, you're winner, Ben Kelly. Johnny, he's an excited man, Ben Kelly. Stoked for him. He's ready to have some fun, and it has been a grind. Good time to remind everybody, the man broke his leg, and I mean, like, broke his leg, and he's out here competing at this level is pretty impressive. What do you got on scoring over there, Johnny? Well, I'm waiting on Josh Toth to check in to confirm if Stu Baylor was in fact able to hold on for that fourth place spot overall. It is showing him in fourth right now, but Josh Toth has not checked in. I'm refreshing and refreshing, but it looks like we also have Zach down there with uh, today's second place finisher, Jordan Ashburn. Zach, if you're ready, you can take it away. Man, it was brutal. Uh, you know, I was coming in today really confident in my bike, and uh, we made some changes, and it was really good, and felt really comfortable all day, and uh, just kind of had some uh, little little issues in the Howard's hole. Just about seemed like every lap something happened, like get behind the lap or they'd crash. I'd, I'd hit it. I just something was happening the whole time, but. I was losing time over there every lap, but I felt really good on the other side and felt like I could really race to the other side. And, uh, you know, we just tried to make up what we could all day. And BK got out there about halfway through, and, man, he was he was charging hard. And, uh, yeah, we tried to reel back in, but, you know, second is where we're at today. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy with everything we've done and uh, the bike, the team. And, uh, yeah, thank you, Lord. Uh, it's just it's a wonderful day. I'm pumped. So. <laughs> 
and for the face grab it's one pro clap. There you go, congratulations uh, to Jordan Ashburn. Solid day, taking home a second place finish. Uh, we can confirm, I think our top three as we saw it is gonna be how it stands. Uh, Toth hadn't checked in, we were up over about a two minute mark on that. So doesn't look like we'll have anybody sneak in there on adjusted time. Nonetheless, great ride by him. Uh, great ride obviously by Kelly Ashburn and Johnny Gerard who stands by with our own Jackson Burrell. All right, guys, I am here with the third place on the day, Johnny Gerard. Johnny, take us through Snowshoe. Yeah, it was gnarly. Uh, Ryan went bad, and he was on it. Kind of let him go by, and, uh, yeah, I got stuck behind a Lappert in Howard's Hole. He was gone. Kind of found myself in my own race. Seen Jordan here coming through the finish line. Two laps to go. Caught him. Last lap and went over the bar. It was a good battle. Overall, it was a good day. All right, guys, that's your third place, John Gerard. Well, congratulations to Johnny Gerard on the P3. Can confirm you saw in the background there the 198 Ampro Yamaha ride of Liam Draper celebrating. Rightfully so. Another win for Liam. Johnny, I, I hate to say it, maybe one of the best things to happen to Liam was that heartbreaker at the Hoosier GNC. Wait, what do you mean that heartbreaker? Two well, in a row. Well, you're right. I was, wasn't was going to draw that much attention to it. But nonetheless, hey, he's gotten something figured out now. Another win for the 198. And Zach Heron stands by with Liam Draper. Maybe. Liam's still getting cleaned off. Go ahead, Zach. Still getting the gloves off. He's just covered head to toe in this snowshoe. Doesn't seem to slow you down any. Liam, job done, man. How's it feel? Uh, I'm stuck. Uh, wanted to win this race. Uh, we did that. I had a big crap. That was so good all day today. That's what happened when you dropped down there for a minute. You worked your way right back up to the top, but you talked about grabbing this points lead headed into the break. How good does it feel to have the momentum on your side going into these next couple months? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty stoked to have the, uh, have the white plates I've never had. I've never been this high on the points at this time of the year, so I'm stoked. Two championship. Well, congratulations to Liam Draper on the win. Man, Stoke for him. We're kind of keeping an eye on things. Want to see how this points uh, situation plays out. We're waiting on Craig DeLong. Johnny, uh, as it runs right now, on. Craig keeps dropping back as XC2 riders are uh. checking in. Currently sitting on screen in that 10th place overall spot. But Josh Toth also not checked in. Uh, so Josh and Craig potentially both having an issue on that last lap. If Craig checks in that 10th place spot, uh, that would be 11 points, meaning he would have 179 points to Stu's 178 and Ben's 174, oh meaning we would have a five-point spread over the top three. That was 24 here today. We're showing now Cody Barnes checked in 10th, meaning it might actually even be a bigger, yes, DeLong all the way down to 11th. He has checked in now, so that is uh, 11th would be, yeah, 10 points. So tied, we have a tied for the points lead, Stu Baylor and <laughs> Craig DeLong, third time this season that we've had a tie for the points lead. Stu Baylor and Craig DeLong, co-points leaders going into the summer break with Ben Kelly sitting only four points behind. You want to talk about a big point shakeup today. Ben Kelly going from 24 points behind to four points behind. Stu Baylor making up eight points on Craig DeLong. And now we have a three rider shootout for this. Other riders still involved, but these three yeah. riders only spread by five points. Johnny, quite simply, a historical season. Sorry, four points. Four points. Four points. Four points. Nonetheless, historical season and GNCC continues. We now have, get this, two two-time winners in 23 uh, with Ben Kelly capturing his second win of the season and putting himself in striking distance of the championship. We're going to take a break. Not a long break. It's summer break. We'll be back this fall. 
to conclude this season for the last three rounds, but that is going to do it for us, and the stage is set for silly season. It's going to be a wild one. On behalf of Jackson Burl, Zach Heron, Johnny Gallagher, uh, our camera operators, Adam, Matt, Josh, Mike, Leah, and John, our drone pilot, Gabe Scholl, our spotter, Hollywood, our EIC, Jordan McFadden, our director, Dylan Acord, producer, Adam Gordon, our executive producer, Carrie Joe Russell. I'm Mikey Waynes. We'll see you at the races.